ESPN and ESPN2, your home for America's pastime. Baseball offers ample opportunity for an individual to grab the spotlight. Usually that spotlight revolves around triumph, a celebration of great accomplishments. Sometimes that spotlight documents tragedy. In the end though, baseball is a team game and it's the team that must play together and work together through good moments and bad to realize dreams of playing into October. The foundation for postseason success is forged in midsummer. Tonight, two playoff hopefuls, the Cardinals and the Giants, will test each other and themselves to see how far their team can go. Next on ESPN's Monday Night Baseball. from Pacific Bell Park, the home of the Giants, ESPN's Monday Night Baseball presents the St. Louis Cardinals against the San Francisco Giants on a beautiful night by the Bay. And amazingly, the Cardinal pitching staff has managed to hold up all season. And so far, so has the St. Louis lead in the Central. In the National League West, well, tonight, with a victory coupled with a Diamondbacks loss, the Giants can move into a first-place tie in that division, as you see three teams separated by a game and a half. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to San Francisco. I'm Dave O'Brien, along with my partner, Rick Sutcliffe. Thanks for joining us on Monday Night Baseball. And tonight, well, you're going to get a real good idea as to why the Cardinals are still ruling the roost in the Central in right-hander Jason Simontaggi. He starts for them this evening. He's 28 years old, but Rick, just a couple of years ago, on the very edge of quitting his major league dreams and giving up baseball. Well, on this night in July, he's seven and one, and he's really been the savior of their pitching staff. Well, a lot of people look for this team to quit, the St. Louis Cardinals, with all that they've been through. So it's only fitting that he wear a Cardinal uniform. He's a big part of the reason they are where they're at right now. But you asked the coaching staff and Tony La Russa, not even them, did they expect him to be as good as he's been. They don't expect him to go away now. He's a local kid from nearby San Jose, California. And while he was pitching in Italy a couple of years ago, his relatives used to send him tapes of major league games and Barry Bonds was on some of those tapes crushing home runs but he's not going to have to face him in the giant lineup tonight Bonds is out with an injured hamstring but when you look at the giant lineup and their everyday players it's one of the most balanced rosters in baseball today it certainly is but because of all of the publicity that Barry Bonds gets which he deserves you don't really see a lot of the things that go on they are in the top five not only in defense but in offense and in pitching as well this is a ball club that really doesn't have to get along to play well because they play hard they don't complain and as the players say Dusty Baker simply let them be themselves well one thing about the Giants they want what the St. Louis Cardinals have right now and that's first place inside their division the Cardinals come at you with a pretty good lefty righty combo Jim Edmonds one of the best left hand hitters in the National League and Albert Pujols tonight they tangle with the San Francisco Giants next ESPN's Monday Night Baseball, brought to you by Mitchum. Strongest ingredients, maximum protection. Not a single cloud in a lovely, pale blue San Francisco sky. It is a gorgeous night for the Cardinals and the Giants at Pac Bell. And coming up on Monday Night Baseball in such soapbox, Rick focuses in on the resilient St. Louis Cardinals. We'll discuss who inherits the title of greatest living hitter now that Ted Williams is gone. Is it Hank Aaron? And Rick will talk fastballs with the Giants closer Rob Nen, who's burning it up in a potential Hall of Fame career. That's all coming up next on Monday Night Baseball. Rick Sutcliffe, Dave O'Brien with you. The ball game coming up. The St. Louis Cardinals against the San Francisco Giants. It's coming your way in a moment. But right now, let's toss it back to the studio and Kevin Court, who is standing by. Take it away, Kevin. Kevin thank you very much a lovely night as the Giants take on the St. Louis Cardinals the Cardinals with a three and a half game lead at the start of play today in the National League Central Division well, these Giants hoping for a crack at first place tonight if Colorado can upend the Arizona Diamondbacks get a look at Tony La Russa managing against Dusty Baker tonight and a look at his lineup this evening Fernando Vena will start it in the leadoff slot hitting 279 but in the cleanup spot 
Albert Pujols. And Rick, after Sunday's little dust up in the Cardinals win over Pittsburgh, Pujols stepped to the plate. He crushed a pitch for his 23rd home run. That's one way to put out a fire. You know what? He's just a great kid. When you talk to the coaches of the St. Louis Cardinals, they say he simply doesn't have the bad habits that some of us did at 22 years of age. He also doesn't have any holes consistently in that swing. Not too many. 75 runs batted in, second in the league. Going up against the right-hander, LeVon Hernandez. And after a 4-0 start, LeVon went south for a long time. Very quickly until he recently turned in a couple of pretty good outings. He's always been a terrific second half pitcher. You know, and he's been a big game pitcher. He's got a 5 0 career record in the postseason, but if he doesn't pick it up shortly, he may have another uniform on. He's one of the guys being mentioned as being traded. 7 and 10 overall, and here's a look at how the San Francisco Giants will back him up. You notice Barry Bonds is not in left field tonight. That's because that hamstring continues to bother him. Jeff Kent is fatigued right now. So he gets a much needed night off at second base. But Shinjo will patrol center field and one of the top defensive outfielders in the game today, American or National League. You know, the Giants shortstop, Rich Arulia, tells me that Shinjo is even better than he thought. He says, as an infielder, when you turn around and you see an outfielder already at full speed, you know that he gets a terrific jump. And the five errors that Shinjo has this year have mostly been because of aggressive throws. He loves trying to throw people out, and the Giants love that about him. By the way, if you're looking for baseball tonight, you can turn over to ESPN2 as we speak and get updated on all the early games. Of course, this one starting at about 7.15 Pacific Coast time. So the sun is still shining. Dusty Baker still working on his lineup card. And it's interesting to note that Tony La Russa, who managed the Oakland A's out here by the Bay in the middle 1980s, used to put Dusty's name in that lineup all the time in Dusty's last two years as an active player in 85 and 86. Now they're trying to beat one another on a sparkling night in San Francisco. So Fernando Vania to dig in, hitting 279 with a homer and 39 runs batted in. And then it's Placido Polanco and Jim Edmonds. Two very good ball clubs to tangle here in the first pitch of the night. Is outside for ball one, and we are underway at Petco. You lose the numbers of Fernando Vina, 39 RBIs. That is a lot for a leadoff hitter. Well, he's hit in eight consecutive games. Very productive at the top of the order. One ball, one strike. You know, productive, but in an unconventional type way for a leadoff hitter. He normally doesn't take a fastball down the middle as he did there. Likes to swing the bat. Right-handers pitch socked into right field, a looping liner for a base hit. So Vina pulls a single, and the Cardinals get started right in front of Polanco, a man on. Well, you can see now why he likes to swing the bat because he's got the ability to do that. He gets this St. Louis Cardinal offense in order, but he just does it the best way he knows how. That's swinging the bat. He doesn't have great speed. He's got to get a good jump to steal a base, but they have been running wild on LeVon Hernandez this year. So watch for that tonight. Vina has stolen 13 bases. There's a very good contact man in Polanco. So a possible play on right away for St. Louis. And Hernandez to work from the stretch. Fly to right in the direction of Reggie Sanders. One down. Vina back to first. Well, since the All-Star break, LeVon Hernandez has pitched pretty well. And he's always been an outstanding second half guy, as mentioned, a record of 18 and 8 in the second half over the last three years. And as Rick points out, absolutely perfect in postseason play, including leading the Florida Marlins to a World Series championship in 1997. Well, when you look at those numbers, he's a big part of the reason that the Giants, the last two years, have had a record of 95 and 56 the second half of the year, the best in all of the National League during that period. Edmonds, the left hand hitter, to step in at 321. He's hit 18 home runs. He needed to dive back in, and Edmonds tonight getting a right hander on the mound. And he's also playing a road game, and those are two of Jim Edmonds' most favorite things. He's a 342 hitter against righties, 318 is batting average away from Bush Stadium, and in each category, he ranks in the National League's top 10. 
five holding, and it's outside. On deck, Albert Pujols. Not too many have been as hot as Albert Pujols over the last four or five weeks. This whole Cardinal team got kind of hot yesterday with confrontations, bench clearings on the field against Pittsburgh. And some of that was the guy at first base, Bernardo Vina, who twice was upended by the Buck star, Brian Giles, on plays at second base. Both appeared to be very clean plays, but the Cardinals did take some umbrage at how hard he went in. Vina holding. And it's a strike. One and one. Well, we know one thing. Tony Roos is going to defend his players. I can remember with the Baltimore Orioles, anytime you hit one of their guys, I could just see the look on Cal Ripken Jr.'s face as if to say, well, I know I'm going to get hit because <laughs> that's the way Tony plays the game. Here it comes. Yeah, you knew it. The 1-1 one -one from Hernandez. Right down the shoot. One ball and two strikes. Edmonds, one of the few Cardinals who is prone to the strikeout. Uh, they're a very difficult team to whip. In fact, the toughest in the National League. I think he got a little bit confused with Binion there. Binion acted as if he was going to take off, and Edmonds just couldn't pull the trigger on what was a good fastball to hit. He turned around almost as if to laugh at Albert Pujol, saying, Why did I take that? I don't know. Now trailing in the count, one and two. I think he's going to watch the catcher, Benito Santiago. If he moves in, that will be the time that he will think about running. Anything away normally is going to be hard, difficult to run on. And here, slapped toward third. Bell was shaded over, flips to second, got the out, and the first threw it away. So they tried to turn to and really force the issue. On a broken bat, tapper to third, Bell was able to cut it off, but they get only one out. Well, it looked like he just got to second base a little bit late. Ball's hit perfectly for that double play. A little in between hop. David Bell knows what it's like to play second. Got rid of it perfectly in the direction that he needed. Look at Vina going hard. You know what? And he had those spikes up a little bit higher than you normally see. I'm sure that had something to do with yesterday, but also the effort Vina put out was high five by manager Tony La Russa because it keeps this inning alive. Yeah, different opponent yesterday was the Pirates upending Vina, but apparently that got under his skin a little. You know, the jet lags involved, I'm not sure if he even knows that he's in San Francisco. <laughs> well, here's Pujols. Tell you what, the Giants know that he's here. The way he's swinging the bat, a wave and a miss there, but hitting 296, 23 homers, 75 driven in. Number two in the National League in RBIs. First in run scored. He homered off LeVon Hernandez last Wednesday in St. Louis. Edmonds the runner at first with two down. And quickly Pools is in the hole, nothing in two. It's a real good job by the Giants advanced scout. That home run that Pujols hit yesterday after the benches had cleared was on a first pitch fastball. He's been swinging at that pitch a lot as of late. LeVon started him off with a breaking ball, got ahead in the count, and now he's got him where he wants it. A four RBI day for Pujols in the victory over the Pirates. O two pitch, just missed. We're going back to Wednesday, facing LeVon Hernandez in a game in which Hernandez had no decision. Pujols jacking this one to left. Now in travel, 394 feet. Ball two strikes here. Just getting started in San Francisco. Check swing. He has such terrific plate discipline. Bullholes with more walks than strikeouts. In July, 355, seven homers, making a pretty good case for player of the month. A player of the year. He's leading in that category right now, but he's certainly in the conversation. He's an MVP candidate for sure. The 2 2. Another check swing and a full count. And Rick, you go back to last year and how impressive it's been. Pujols reducing his strikeouts and his rate of strikeouts. Last year, he fanned once every 7.2 plate appearances. 
This year, it's one every 9.7. As mentioned, more walks than whips. That's just all about preparation. Knowing what a pitcher's strength is and where your weakness lies, trying to avoid that situation. It's tough to put away a chopper foul. Edmonds on the move. He'll go back to first, two away. Albert Pool says the third lowest number of strikeouts in the National League with players who have hit 20 home runs. Right behind Bonds and Vladimir Guerrero. So. Rick, when you're talking about an MVP candidate, he's in great company everywhere. This is one thing that some of the giant players are talking about, which is different in Levon when he's doing well as opposed to when he's not. When he starts to struggle, he really slows down the pace of the game. Very deliberate again. Edmonds takes off a high bound to third. Bell in. A long throw, but he slings it over in time. Side retired. One hit and one man left. No harm done in the inning off Hernandez. And the Giants are coming to bat in San Francisco. The Giants coming to bat. Nothing, nothing. And St. Louis did not score in the top half of the first inning. So here come Dusty Baker's Giants. Tom Goodwin will lead it off. And then Ramon Martinez at second base. Jeff Kent is out tonight because of fatigue. Barry Bonds not in left field. So Reggie Sanders with his 14 home runs and good power has to pick up the slack Rick. Well he's been healthy this year. He's only missed seven ball games. He's had some huge hits for the Giants. And the key statistic to me that tells you Reggie Sanders is having a good year. He's been hit by a pitch nine times this year. You don't hit people you know you can get out. Jason Simon Tachi what a story he's been seven and one. Two years ago he was barely keeping his career alive pitching for the Chico Heat of the Independent Western League. Well, Dave, he's 2 0 this year against the Cincinnati Reds in his three starts. The Cardinals have won all three of those starts, and you look at the pennant race, they are up three and a half games over their rival in the National League Central. He's a big part of that. Tom Goodwin in the batter's box, the left fielder tonight. Like Barry Bond spot. And Simon Tachi, 6'2, 185 pounds. The man from nowhere about to deliver. And his night begins with strike one. Goodman hitting 264. With a home run and eight runs batted in. He's had some big hits already for the Giants. Wave and a miss there in the count of two. And Tom, after crushing the Dodgers on Friday and again on Sunday with huge hits. He had the line of the day yesterday. Remember the Dodgers let him go, and they're, they're still paying about three million dollars of his salary. And he said, "I think that next check from the Dodgers might be a little late." Swing and a miss. He's done. Simon Tucci with him, one gone, and now defensively for St. Louis, it's Pools, Edmonds, and Marrero from left to right in the outfield. Polanco, Renteria, Vini, and Martinez on the infield. Matheny does the catching. How about Edgar Renteria as a gold glove candidate this year? Well, you know what? The same thing they did last year with Fernando Vina, saying he deserved it. They're talking about Renteria that way this year, and he certainly has. He's changed everything about him. He's in much better physical shape right now than he's ever been. Only made nine errors this season. Ramon Martinez at second base. So this is a giant team without its big guns without Kent and without Bonds on the same night. Barry Bonds had an MRI on that ailing hamstring today. We have not heard the results of it. They're expecting good news because just yesterday even though he did not play in the game at Dodger Stadium he had some kind of batting practice session knocking out one after another at Dodger Stadium. And Barry was actually hovering around the, the bat rack late in yesterday's game a game that uh, because of Tom Goodwin the Giants pulled out but Barry was itching for a chance to get in and hit swing and a miss by Martinez I called Barry this morning just not only to check on him but also his father Bobby Bonds who had a kidney removed and Barry wanted to pass along wishes to everybody that his dad is doing real well the MRI though wasn't till late this afternoon for Barry Two, two outside all filled up on Martinez. We waited for the last moment for word to come down out of the trainer's room but hadn't heard as of yet. Well he's got your number. 
Yeah. So if, if it just buzzy up here, I've got it turned off. Should I turn it back on? <laughs> we may uh, we may just uh, turn that on for you. And Bonds at 595. Speaking of numbers, 595 home runs. May get back in there as soon as tomorrow, maybe Wednesday. Fouled off, but still three balls, two strikes. But you're really up next. Well, they know one thing. They're not going to win the National League West without the two guys that aren't in the lineup tonight. But you know what? For three or four days, the guys that are in there have the ability and the talent to just turn it up a notch, play a little bit above their talent level, and win some ball games. The guy in the manager's chair has a bit of a touch for things like that. Rocking it in the right for a base hit. So Martinez is on. Let's go to the studio, and here's Kevin Cork with an update. Kevin. All right, Dave and Rick, thanks very much. Mike Kincaid getting busy tonight for the Dodgers. Take care of the Padres man on third, and that's an RBI the old-fashioned way. Brian Jordan coming on in. L.A. leading their southern neighbors one up. What a race in the National League West. Three teams separated by a game and a half. And you're watching one of them tonight in the San Francisco Giants. Just a game out. And a big part of that reason is the San Diego Padres. They swept the Dodgers in a two-game series and then won two out of three over the weekend against Arizona, beating Randy Johnson yesterday. Really it taking one down low for a ball. Been rough sledding for Rich overall, given his numbers in the past. He's at 250 with seven homers. Talking about a guy who last year. Hit 324 with 37 home runs. But look at how many of them came after the All Star break last season. He's healthy now. He was not for large portions of the first half with groin injuries and that elbow injury, which did require arthroscopic surgery. And yet, when he's in the lineup, the Giants are 21 games over 500. Well, he knew that. It was amazing how quick he was able to come back after that surgery. Martinez on one out on the corner one and one you're going to try to stay away from the power of Richard Ria. Simon Tachi might show him a fastball in just as a you know here it is take a look at it but by design he's going to try to get him out of way this ballpark was the toughest ballpark in the National League last year to hit a home run in. We forget about that because they had a guy that hit 73. But you've got to hit it a long ways to get it out. Got it sharply. Polanco with it. Slings it over to Vino one on the first. Good scoop there by Martinez for the double play. So the twin killing ends it. We've played one inning on a lovely night in San Francisco. We are scoreless. The right-hander, Jason Simon Tachi, getting out of the first inning without much difficulty, giving up one hit. And they'll be bundling up as the night starts to cool off here in San Francisco, but the sun has yet to set. It is just delightful. Tina Martinez leading off the second for the Cardinals against Levon Hernandez, batting 242 with 11 home runs. And Tino, you thought in the month of May, Rick, was really starting to take off. He had an excellent month, six homers, 20 RBIs, led the Cardinals in both of those categories. But is it simply going to take a full season for Tino in the National League? No, I think it's just going to take half a year. The one nothing pitch. Swing and a miss. Good change. Just a matter of getting around the league, adjusting the ballparks. You know, he's really struggled hitting on the road. You got to realize these are completely different backgrounds than he has seen throughout his career in the American League. A lot of that spent with the New York Yankees where he went to four consecutive World Series the last four years. And five overall wearing the pinstripes. Trying to go back with the Cardinals now. He's been such an important guy to this club through all that they have had to endure. One of Daryl Kyle's closest friends, along with Matt Morris. And Tino's really been a good guy for that clubhouse. Been a good guy for their infield, too. He's been tremendous defensively at first base. Two balls, two strikes. You know, and the one thing they knew they could count on when they signed him to that three-year deal was the fact he's going to play every day. He doesn't he? You know, he's just one of those guys that, that doesn't get injured. Wave and a miss, and he strikes out. First K in the book for Levon Hernandez. Let's go to Kevin Cork in the studio. 
Okay, Dave and Rick want to update the Dodgers and Padres once again. L.A. leading 1-0 with a man on second. Bubba Trammell brings home run again. Two guys who have a lot of experience. 1-1's one our score. Back to pac -Bell. Tied up there, tied up here, but no score in the second inning. One out in inning number two. Rick Sutcliffe, Dave O'Brien from San Francisco, and Edgar Renteria. The Cardinals shortstop and the Gold Glove candidate. Hitting 298 with four homers. He's driven in 40 runs and closing in on a career milestone. He's 10 hits away from his 1,000th career base hit. You know, we were just in St. Louis the last couple of weeks, and we know the heat that's going on back there in the state of almost misery right now instead of Missouri. I wonder where they found those jackets at. <laughs> those have been buried in the trunks. And guys with long sleeves, they, they haven't had those since the first month of the season. You're not lying. Even when the sun goes down, it does not cool off in the middle of the summer in St. Louis. But Sam Itachi staying bundled up, trying for his eighth win of the year. Off speed pitch into the dirt. So two and one on Renteria. Eli Marrero would be next. One out in the second inning. You know, Jeff Kent was a last minute scratch for the Giants. He was in the original lineup. Manager Dusty Baker gave me this afternoon. There are a lot of Giants that are under the weather. Cold type symptoms. JT Snow among them. He's in at first base tonight. Up the middle goes Renteria. And on nine hits away from a thousand in his career. It's the second hit off of Levon Hernandez. That'll bring Marrero up next. You know, last year there was a lot of talk this time of year about Edgar Renteria being traded. Tony La Russa sat down and had a talk to him and he just told him a couple of the things that he didn't care for. He thought he could be in better shape. He thought he played a position that physically you had to be terrific at. And you know what they didn't trade him and they are really glad that that did not happen because he came to spring training in the best shape of his life. And right now they say he's playing the best shortstop of anybody in the National League. Well the numbers bear that out statistically. He's been excellent with the glove and hitting up around 300 for the year. And if Edgar Renteria is not batting 300 or somewhere very close to it, you know something's up. He has the ability to hit the ball the other way as well as any middle infielder around. Really sprays the ball around particularly well. Not running. Poked into right center. Shinjo over. That's the second out as Marrero pops up. Renteria back to first with two down. Well, Renteria wasn't running, but from where we sit to watch a baseball game, Shinjo was off and running almost before the ball was hit. He saw the location that the pitch was coming in. Look at the ball on the outer half of the plate. You see where Benito's sitting. And Shinjo knows with Devon Hernandez on the mound, his control is incredible. He's going to be on the inner half or outer half of the plate most of the time with Benito and he can simply just cheat in that direction and that helped him there. You saw the little crow hop that Shinjo performs every time he makes a catch. And well, that can go. <laughs> you don't like that too well, much. I, mean, I, I knew that was rubbing you the wrong way. <laughs> and, and a lot of people you know it takes away from from really what a terrific outfielder he is. People just uh, no, most people don't do that. I'll put it that well, he paid for it several times last year while the New York Met because of his flashiness and his uh, so-called showboating. He got drilled a few times. So the point was made. But uh, that's a guy who won seven gold gloves playing like that in Japan. A lot of fans here in San Francisco really like him flying to right. And Sanders to put it away. Side retired one man left who played an inning and a half in San Francisco. Still no score on Monday night. Hits in his career. How about Barry Bonds? Closing in on 600 career home runs. When it's all said and done, maybe the greatest player all time, period. But you look at Pete Rose, he didn't compete with the other guys in home runs, Rick Sutcliffe, not even close. But that's 20 seasons of 210 hits a year averaged out. Well, but you know what jumps out at me when I look at that? How many of them are still active? There's one of them. Mm -hmm. He's not done. That career average is going to go up. And those home run totals seemingly go up daily when he's in the lineup. Not active tonight. 
but perhaps available. Talking about Barry Bonds. Reggie Sanders batting in his slot in the lineup this evening, leading off the second inning. <laughs> I don't you know, have, we're checking, checking the Sut's cell phone during the commercial break. I don't have time to check the call, but I missed one, it says. That might be Mr. Bonds calling to tell you that the, <laughs> he might be ready to hit around the eighth. Of the I, you got to answer that thing. I'm not going <laughs> to hold my breath on that one. I, I, I felt blessed that he called me today just to report in, particularly about his father, because, uh, you know, with all that's gone on in baseball right now, wins and losses, uh, wins anyway, don't seem to be that important. I think a lot of people who never got a chance to see Barry's dad play have no concept how talented Bobby Bonds was. The things that Bobby Bonds could do on a field. Not too many could match in his day. Swing and a miss by Sanders. <laughs> Sports Center did a deal last year when he was hitting all those homers that he had more career at bats, that being Barry off of me, without hitting a homer than anybody else. But <laughs> they forget the fact his dad took me deep like three or four times. <laughs> So I know, I know how talented his father. So the family got you. They got me. If, if not the son. The pitch to Sanders up and in. He's facing the right-handed Jason Simon Tachi, making his 13th major league start. Pitched for the Italian Olympic team in Sydney, Australia, when they adopted him because his great grandparents came from Italy. But he was born. Just up the road here in Northern California. He wants Reggie Sanders. And that's how the second inning gets underway for Samatachi. Well, he and Levon Hernandez, his opponent tonight, by the way, squaring off with a second consecutive start. But look at how many more outings for Levon Hernandez. 167. This is number 13 for Jason. So many great stories about Jason. I, I, the one that was funniest was the one he told us last week the fact that when he got to spring training none of the players would talk to him because they they thought he was Japanese <laughs> they figured he didn't understand thought he was Japanese yeah that's what he said Santiago takes a strike well he did pitch for Venezuela in the 2001 winter league so he speaks a little Spanish and that's where he learned that last pitch that he just started Benito off with that good hard slider. <laughs> well Simon Tachi <laughs> he's See? not Japanese. He, but the, <laughs> he, he might have been confused. The 0 1 runs in on Benito and moves him off the plate one ball one strike. You know you've got to do that when you don't throw real hard. And Jason doesn't. You have to keep people honest, and to do that, you've got to make them move both of their feet. He did it to Reggie Sanders in his first at bat. He does it to Benito here. They start diving over that outside corner, and you don't throw real hard. They're, they're simply going to, you know, it's all about bread and butter. You want it, you're going to give it to them. Sanders runs. Here's the toss by Matheny. Now he's getting back. Throw back into first. He's out. The tag by Martinez. Reggie Sanders changing his mind and race back into first base but not in time and he is out one gone in the second Reggie's been running real well he's got 17 stolen bases this year and might not have been caught stealing there if it weren't for the gold glove winner Fernando Vina watch what happens here look at him come all right he's going to the back now he sees him going back watch him now look at him come get the throw get rid of it like it was a double play just in time with a perfect tag by Tino to get the out and it tags snow coned a little bit as well and Sanders unable to get back well he might have gotten back if he would have come in with a hard slide but to say why didn't he? I, I, I well hold on I'll, I'll call Barry <laughs> Barry Barry will find out it is a caught stealing two four three and that's because obviously he took off and thought about it. That was his first notion to steal second. Three one pitch hammer deep to right center field. Edmonds on his horse racing back that sails over his head and it bounces up into the stands for a ground rule double. Two bases for Benito Santiago. And so now the caught stealing really hurts. Oh and you know what I think of. The only reason he was caught stealing was because of Fernando Vina. Already he has saved them one run tonight, whether he drives in a run or not. 
He tried to get on the scoreboard, that being Vina with that base hit in the first inning, but he didn't get any help from his friends. Well, he just helped Jamin Simatachi out, or else there would have been second and third, nobody out. Vina chatting with one of his friends, Benito Santiago, who is now in scoring position for JT Snow. And Rick had talked about some of the Giants being under the weather. It's our understanding that is not why Jeff Kent is resting tonight. He's just tired. He's been playing every day and Dusty Baker wanted to rest him. But J.T. Snow had flu-like symptoms yesterday and it's been making its way around the giant clubhouse. One strike on him. Damon Miner also had difficulties and uh, our own Peter Pascarelli, our stat master here in the booth, is also not feeling too well. So hold your cards and letters, but I know you're you're praying for Peter. Boy, if Peter got a runny nose. That could be dangerous. <laughs> Not going anywhere near that. The 0 1 pitch is on the inside corner. David Bell up next. Well, you know what? JT Snow didn't come anywhere near the field yesterday until the seventh inning when he finally got dressed. Came on in the ninth inning, was able to walk, and eventually scored on the home run by Tom Goodwin. Santiago at second base as the Giants look to get the first run of the night off of Simon Tachi. One ball and two strikes. Back in 1999, the day before the Pirates were going to promote Simon Tachi from single A to double A, he decided to goof off a little bit. He jumped up on a trampoline just to have a little fun. And while he was doing that, he hurt his knee so bad they couldn't call him up. Will tap her right side. That'll advance the runner. Vigna on to first for the out. Santiago into third base. And later that season, the Pirates release Simon Tachi. A long and winding road for him, almost out of baseball several times. He admits just two years ago he thought about quitting. He said, that was it. I was ready to mothball that uniform. Well, this is pretty good play right here, using Fernando Vigna all you can. Watch how he slows down, though. Look at him just come up. He just stops just in time to see what that last hop was going to do. And when it came up to him, the only reason he knew he could stop was because beforehand he thought about the base runner. I've heard many times good infielders talk about the clock that they have to have, knowing when to speed up, knowing when you can slow down a little bit. Well, he just pushed the pause button a little bit on that one there, held up, and made an easy play that much easier. So he'll face David Bell, Simon Tachi will, with a runner at third. And two down. Into the dirt. Nice stop by the former gold glover, Matheny. Well, there's not anybody better at it than Matheny is, but all three of Tony LaRusso's catchers are good at it. That is just textbook form right there. If you're taping this on video at home, just go ahead and use that if you want to teach that to a high school kid catcher. One ball, one strike. When you think about it, right up the middle, who's better than the St. Louis Cardinals on a night like tonight? Matheny, Renteria, and Vigna at short and second, and Edmonds, who catches everything in center field. Two balls, one strike. I'll tell you what, they, they don't back off any when you go to third, or when you go to first, or even when you go to right field. Albert Pujols, I mean, he's a, he was a third baseman by trade. He's out there because they're a better team with him in that position. Polanco at third base. Very, very steady for them. Bell a 250 hitter with power. He's hit 14 homers. So Simon Tachi can't be too cute. And it's outside. Three balls, one strike. So the hitters count for Bell. If he walks him, Shinjo will step in next. Look at the confidence of Jason though on the mound in the windup. He didn't care about the runner at third base. Ball four. There are a lot of guys in their first year at the big league level. I don't care if they're 18, 28, or 38. They get a little bit jittery with the man on third and they throw out of the stretch. Not this kid. I mean, kid, because of the fact he doesn't have a lot of experience. The confidence picks up his target right there. I mean, that was almost as if he, he, he just said, I'm, I'm not taking my chances with David Bell. There's more home runs, there's a lot more RBIs and a higher average than the guy that's hitting now. His command has been so so tonight, trying to sharpen it with Shinjo digging in. 
Runners on the corners, two away. And a fly to left center, but not deep. In comes Pujols, a long run in, but he'll reach it in time. And two men will be stranded. And so we've wrapped up a couple innings in San Francisco. No score yet. ESPN's Monday Night Baseball, brought to you by Capital One, who asks, what's in your wallet? A spectacular view of the Bay Bridge here on San Francisco Bay. And it's the Giants and the Cardinals inside spectacular Pac Bell. And every time I come out here, Rick Sutcliffe, and you and I have done a number of games in San Francisco this year, mm -hmm. we sound like we're employed full time by the San Francisco <laughs> Chamber of Commerce. You know? and, and by the way, where are my free Alcatraz t shirts? I'm supposed to get a box of those <laughs> for all this work. Fouled off by Simon Tachi. But I mean, it is just one of the really great places to see a major league game throughout the league and I think it's my favorite new ballpark and you can see it from the sea or from the land. So many things that the fans here rave about the design of this stadium one of them being that walkway that goes all the way around beautiful Pac Bell. You can chase your four year old for about a mile and a half <laughs> all the way around that thing and never miss a pitch. It's great. By the way if you're looking for Sports Center, it's on ESPN 2 right now. With Bill Pito and Brian Kenny. A couple of fine looking gentlemen. So tune them in and then come on back and watch the Cardinals and the Giants with us. Let's see what kind of hitter Jason Simon Tachi is. He's batting a buck 74 at the moment, followed by Vina and Polanco. A one two pitch from LeVon Hernandez. This is a part, Rick, of LeVon Hernandez's game that has given him a lot of trouble in the past and has frustrated his managers. He has difficulty a lot of times putting away seven, eight, and nine in the batting. That's where that focus comes from. You just start taking it for granted, and the next thing you know, you're into the heart of the order. Ground ball, diving effort by Snow, and it's through for a base hit. So Simon Tachi on with a single, and we'll get a side view of pretty good cut here he punches through a base hit front and inside I tell you what I don't really look at how many hits a starting pitcher gets what I look at is a fact does he strike out a lot does he walk Simon Tachi's walked a couple of times and how many times is he successful getting that sacrifice bunt down this guy does the little things that makes a difference sometimes between a five and three record and a seven and one record where he's at now well he wears the number 46 and he has a lot of friends and family about a hundred of them who made the drive in from San Jose where he grew up and went to high school. Vina takes a ball up top. He has single tonight one for one. So the St. Louis second baseman among the best in the game defensively. And he's also been red hot with a bat. He's hit in nine consecutive games. Simon Tachi will get the Cardinal red jacket. As the temperatures start to get down into the 50s. You know, one thing I look at and I didn't expect Jim Edmonds or Albert Pujols to have any sacrifice bunts this year but the only other regular without one is Fernando Vina. I kind of had I, I was thinking bunt a little bit here. Now Bunning takes a strike one and one. Well, he's maybe the hottest guy going right now outside of Pujols. And against LeVon Hernandez, 12 hits and 34 at bats. He's hitting over 350 against this pitcher. He sees him well. Not bunting. He slices a foul, and now he's behind one and two. For one reason, Tony Russo might not bunt with Bean is the fact that he's only grounded into six double plays this year. In this situation, more times than not, he's going to be patient. He's going to get a pitch that he can get underneath and put some air beneath it. Maybe another factor Simon Tachi is not on the bases very often he's a pitcher after all and it would have to be a very good bunt to get him over one and two nobody out Hit hard and fair inside first base down the line should be an extra base hit Simon Tachi heading into third dug out by Sanders and it's a double for Vina the throw gets away but the runners will hold. So Vina is two for two. Let's go to the studio right now. Time for an update. Here's Kevin Court. 
All right, fellas, they say defense wins championships. Defense can save runs, too. Nevin at the plate. Kotze trying to come home. You'll get nothing and like it. LaDuca with a nice block. Still 1-1. One, one. Runs at a premium tonight, guys. i tell you what surprises me there. They were playing Fernando Vina completely to the opposite field. You even see J.T. Snow jump off the bag at first base, yet LeVon Hernandez throws an off-speed pitch. Something that he could pull, which goes away from the strength of your defense. Somebody didn't communicate real well right there, or LeVon just shook off and threw what he wanted in disregard to how the defense was set up. Well, whoever made the mistake, it could blow up right in their faces in a big inning. Here's Polanco. He's flying to right, 0 for 1. But then you've got Edmonds and Pujols right after him, and there's nobody out with two on. Base coach Jose Okendo walking down the line. You could almost hear him say, just hit a ground ball to second base. You not only drive in a run, but you'll be able to get Bernan Fernando Vina to third with just one out. Aurelia and Martinez backed up to concede the run. No score yet. In the top of the third. High chop runner coming home. Here comes the throw by Bell, and he will be out at the plate. Simon Tachi cut down. It was hit hard. It got to Bell quickly, and the play at the plate was not close. Vigna holding it second, one gone. Not by design right here. Really a couple of, of, of not typical at-bats for Polanco. He's a guy, and his first at-bat took a swing at the first pitch with a runner on, hit a lazy little fly ball to right field. Now. A ground ball really in the only position other than right back to the pitcher that he wouldn't have gotten an RBI. Really surprised at his approach right there. He's normally a much better situational hitter than that. The Cardinals a team that does not hit into many double plays but that's what LeVon Hernandez is looking for right now to get out of the inning. It's first and second one out and a twin killing would crush this for St. Louis. Edmonds 0 for 1. And a 1 nothing pitch to the left hand slugger. Top back toward Hernandez. Loves it. Looks at second. On to first he goes. Two down. Runners at second and third here. You know, just a couple of questions after the game that, that I'd like to ask Tony LaRusso. One, with nobody out, why was Simon Tachi running? on that ground ball on the infield two with him running how come Fernando Vina wasn't running as well yeah surprised to see him stay right there if Bernina if Vina goes from second base to third he would have easily scored on that high chopper there I got to feel like that Simon Tachi just ran through a stop sign thinking that, that he could create something do you because, think you didn't think a contact play was on there? well if, if it was Vina certainly would have been at third base yeah. that's that's what I'm guessing here a look at the play again. The one at the plate that got Simon Tachi. All right, there's the ball. All right, it's hit. Okay, he's off and running right away. But Fernando Vina, when you see the pitcher go, you've got to come as well. Who cares if he tags you out at third and lets that run score? Well, let's see how Levon Hernandez pitches. Albert Pujols, the number two RBI man in the National League, with first base open. And runners at second and third. Tino Martinez up next. Probably the Cardinals one of the best base running teams in the game of baseball. We've talked before about the hustle chart that they have in the clubhouse. Started by their first base coach Dave McKay. There'll be some people with some bad marks. So far tonight. Two and nothing and so far nothing to swing at for pool holes. Tino Martinez in the on deck circle just saw what was going on there and knocked the donut off that bat. He knows what's happening here. Yeah, they're going to put pool holes on. After he would not bite after the first two, but those were nowhere near the plate. This will load up the bases for Tino. So Dusty Baker facing his first in game crisis. Bases loaded two away. As pool holes takes first. And no way they were going to throw him anything in the same zip code as home plate. 
Tino throughout his career has been an exceptional clutch hitter. And this is where he does it too. Usually with more than one guy on base. He's leading off the inning there in the top of the second when he struck out. He's a much different and better hitter in these spots. Nine career grand slams for Tino Martinez. That does not include the one in the World Series against the Padres. Ball one. Mark Langston won. Yep. And a 308 average as well. The sacks loaded. So remember the pitch right before the grand slam home run, which a lot of people thought could have been called strike three. That's right. Media Polanco and Pujols leading all the way around for St. Louis. The one nothing. Driven into left center. Here comes Goodwin to make the catch. With the bases loaded, he went down to get it. A sinking, slicing line drive. Tino hit it right on the screws. But Goodwin, who has lifted the Giants with his terrific bat in recent days, bails them out with some pretty handy glove work. They leave them loaded. In San Francisco, Rick Sutcliffe, Dave O'Brien from Pac Bell Park. And ready for the home half of the third inning. Nothing, nothing. Thanks for joining us here on Monday Night Baseball. Thomas Goodwin just making a wonderful catch, a sprawling catch in left field with the bases loaded to bail out Levon Hernandez, who is now hitting and hits very well. A 270 average for the season. He is the only San Francisco pitcher with as many as 10 hits. You see the six RBIs. The rest of their staff suck, has eight RBIs total. Always handled that well. A pop up here. Matheny looking for room, but it's over the top of the net. Nothing in two. And that's always been by design with manager Dusty Baker, having pitchers that can handle the bat. Things that they can do in certain situations. He doesn't like to be put into a trap where he has to bunt with them. So they work hard in spring training against live pitching on being able to just put the ball in play. Not this time, and he's out on strikes. So Levon Hernandez whiffs. We're right back here on Wednesday in San Francisco. And among the ball games you can see on Wednesday at ESPN, 1 o'clock, the Braves at the Marlins. And then presented by Jiffy Lube at 7 o'clock from San Francisco. The Giants host the Cardinals in game three of this series. And then at 7 p.m. on ESPN 2, the Yankees and the Indians and the Devil Rays at the Red Sox. Gary Sheffield has been on fire. Eight home runs in July, a 379 average. And Atlanta keeps on rolling, although today Greg Maddox took the loss against the Marlins. You know who predicted a huge year for Gary Sheffield? Who? In spring training with Barry Bonds. He did. Who worked out with him all winter. Gary telling us opening day that he lived in the basement of Barry's house just so that he could work out with Barry. Had some things about his swing he had to change. And then it really wasn't fair. Remember that play in the second inning where he went into the stands to catch a foul ball and he jammed his thumb right off the bat. Right. And it took him a while, I guess, just up until now to where he could grip that bat again. Well, he's gripping it pretty good and ripping it coming into today's game against the Marlins. I don't know if he reached today, but he had reached in 46 consecutive games. Gary Sheffield. One out, good one at the plate. He's 0 for 1. The count is full. Three balls, two strikes. You know, you talked to the Braves in spring training, and they talked about that deal. And, and they said the biggest reason we got Sheffield was because he can hit anybody. They knew they were going to get into the postseason with the strengths that they had, the confidence they had. Smoltz could be the closer for him. You get into the postseason, though, you've got to do damage against Randy Johnson's and Kurt Schilling's. Hit hard. It scoots to Vigna. And there are two gone. Well, two guys with pretty good fastballs. Sheffield with amazing numbers against big time pitchers. That's what that whole thing was geared for. Base is empty here on a night that Barry Bonds is uh, 
not in the lineup, nor is Jeff Kent for the Giants. Probably going to be kind of quiet out there in McCovey's Cove tonight. <laughs> yeah. Well, although there is the possibility Barry could play. And that hamstring injury has held him out of the lineup for a few days. I just love the way these two teams are playing. I mean, the intensity that's involved. And a lot of these series are almost like like postseason series. The way they're going about each other. Martinez is one for one with a base hit his first time up. And you talked with Rob Nen before the game, and we'll be hearing some from the terrific Giant closer a little later tonight. And that's what he said right after the Cardinals and the Giants met last Wednesday in St. Louis. He said they're all going to be like this. Every time we meet these two teams, head to head, it'll be like this. Wide to right field, hit pretty well, backing up Marrero. But there's a lot of room out there to make a play. One, two, three. Go the Giants. So we're one third of the way there. It's still scoreless. In San Francisco. Pack Bell Park in San Francisco, and it's the Cardinals and Giants tonight on Monday Night Baseball. No score. Going to the fourth inning. Excellent pitching. Levon Hernandez and Jason Simon Tachi. Edgar Renteria. But one point in his career helped Levon Hernandez win a World Series ring. Well, helped themselves to a World Series championship in 1997. Levon, the ace in the postseason that year for the Marlins, was the World Series most valuable player. And Edgar Renteria was the man who drove in Craig Council with the winning hit in Game 7 to beat the Indians. And now they're enemies, at least in a baseball sense. You remember that World Series well, don't you? Just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, I was particularly fond of the outcome, more so than most of the Indians fans. What a great series it turned out to be, at least at the very end. Renteria with a base hit off his old friend in the second inning. So his batting average sitting right at 300. The count is full three and two. You know he's always been a talented baseball player but now he wants to be a complete player. I mean the kind of guy that, that gets at the ballpark early and if something's wrong he stays late trying to fix it doesn't just show up and expect good things to happen. Taps a foul. You know he first came up he was a phenom and they used to call him the the Barranquilla baby out of Barranquilla Colombia. Where he's a huge star. He can't walk the streets without being charged by photographers and autograph seekers. But now he's maturing. The 3 2 pitch, and it's outside. He'll take a walk here to lead off the fourth inning. Let's go to the studio. Here's Kevin Court. Kevin. All right, fellas, thanks. Second game and second hit of the young career of Will Nieves. This is a base hit to bring home Ronnie Gant. Suddenly the Padres lead the Dodgers 2-1. That's also his very first run batted in. Back to pack back. A terrific race in the National League West, and we're getting a taste of it tonight. The Giants, one game behind Arizona. Those Dodgers, a game and a half behind Arizona. So three clubs separated by one and a half. Here's Eli Marrero. He has fly to center. 0 for 1. Renteria just walked, so he's aboard and a threat to steal. In <laughs> fact, they were thinking that way. So you probably would have pitched out there too. Huh? I think I would have, yeah. <laughs> would have gotten one right anyway, and look at the standings. The Diamondbacks hosting Colorado as we speak. Doesn't hurt to pitch out when you've got a guy on the mound that has good control. A lot of times with Levon, he can come back with something other than a fastball for a strike. In fastball counts. Renteria with 12 thefts. He's been caught five times. Santiago still with the ability to throw out base stealers and to throw them out from his knees. He'll do it every once in a while. Remember when Benito first came up in 87? And he was a wonderkin behind that plate with that style to throw from the shin guards. Just a howard to throw, and it's up high for a ball. Still has a good arm. What a wonderful story he's been this year. An all star, four consecutive years, but that was 10 years ago. Be able to come back and represent the Giants in Milwaukee this year. 
more so really because of, of what he's done defensively and how he's handled the staff here in San Francisco. And every one of their pitchers just love throwing to him. Fly to right by Marrero and an easy play for Reggie Sanders. One man out. I'll tell you what, that, that's the swing of a guy that's tired right now. And we've seen more than one of those tonight from these St. Louis Cardinals. They played in Pittsburgh yesterday. They were on the, look at that. I mean, that's, how do you miss that? Polanco did exactly the same thing in the first inning. But it's just been an amazing trip. They, they started in L.A., and then they went home to St. Louis for a day and a half. Now get on a plane and go play three in Pittsburgh all the way on the East Coast. All right, now you're done. Get back on a plane, and let's get back out here in San Francisco and try to beat the Giants. Well, they may get a break if you look at the schedule. 16 of the next 25 against sub-500 teams. But Tony LaRusso said last week they were home for two quick games against the Giants, as you said, right back on the road. He didn't even unpack his suitcase. He said, I just left it completely packed in the clubhouse. Did, did he have Washington? I, you know, I didn't go there. Didn't really need it. There are things I don't need to know. Renteria on the run. Bell will go on the first base with the throw and in the second Renteria with two out and the pitcher coming up and Jason Simon Tachi still no score in this one but Simon Tachi did spank a single to right his first time up he's one for one you know, that's one of Tony LaRusso's big pet peeves is staying out of that ground ball into a double play he almost takes that personally as if he should have put the runner in motion knowing that there was a possibility of ball being hit on the ground. You wouldn't do that with the pitcher coming up if you didn't have faith that he might be able to make something happen. Well, he's made enough happen that Simon Tachi is a 208 hitter. He takes strike one. This is a guy they found, the Cardinals did, in the Venezuelan Winter League in 2001. In December of 2001, they offered him a minor league contract at about $8,000 a month which was a giant raise for Jason after his days driving a tow truck and a cab to make ends meet. One ball, one strike. Here he is in the big leagues and tonight try to go to eight and one. And if he continues to win, they're going to start writing about Jason Simon Tachi as a very serious candidate for rookie of the year. If they're not already. Drove some trucks in the offseason but back in those days you had to <laughs> you weren't making it up during the season is that before you get by before you were rookie of the year even when I did win the rookie of the year swaying and a miss and it counts one and two got a little confident went out and bought me a townhouse <laughs> did you didn't have any furniture <laughs> slept on the floor had a box spring is all I had Wow. My kitchen table was my mom and dad's patio. <laughs> Ran a little bit short. Swing and a miss and Simon Tachi out on strikes. Well, he's going to do a whole lot better than that if he continues to pitch this way, but Ivan Hernandez gets him and we're still scoreless. Fourth in San Francisco, Giants nothing and the Cardinals nothing. And before the game, Rick Sutcliffe caught up with the Giants' terrific closer, Rob Nen, and talked about playing for Dusty Baker. What's that like? But when people talk about him, him and the respect they have for him, what, where does that come from? Well, he, he's a guy that, that he's easy to play for. You go out there, you see his, his emotions. He goes out there every day, pumped up, wanting to play. You know, wishing he was still out there a little bit, just to kind of, because he, he knows how the game is. He knows how, uh, how, how much fun it can be. And, and uh, you know, to go out there and play and, and, and be able to go out there and save the game for him, it, for me, it means a lot. You know, I was a teammate of Dusty's with the Dodgers, and, and, and Rob's exactly right. He, he manages like he played. I mean, he's, you can't see him now, but he wears the wristbands, and he cheerleads, and he motivates, and he yells, and he screams, and, you know, he just he commands respect everywhere he's ever been. Well, still tremendous energy despite the prostate cancer surgery. Coming back from that. How about that, too? Did not miss one day of spring training. Talk about somebody that you want to hire as, as an employee. It's a pretty good place to start right there. And as Rob Nen pointed out, one of the reasons that the Giants love playing for him and they'll run through a wall for Dusty Baker, you hear that over and over, is that childlike enthusiasm. 
Still such a great passion for the game. Now, really, it pops him back out of play. And go back to last Wednesday, Benito Santiago hit the home run in the eighth inning. And look at Dusty, like nine years old again, <laughs> celebrating in his dugout. That was a game-winning home run. You know, and, and just knowing him as long as I have, he probably predicted that. <laughs> you know, he just kind of has a, a you know a special sense about this game. You look at the tenure there that he has. <laughs> that's pretty good company to be with. One of the great things about that, that particular home run by Santiago, and I'm sure one of the reasons that you saw Dusty get so excited, it was on a 3-0 pitch, so they green-lighted Santiago. And he went with it and crushed it. Three-time National League Manager of the Year. You know, and he spread them out. I mean, 93, 97, the last one in the year of 2000. Well, you know, we think about the Diamondbacks and world champs, and they beat the Yankees. You know, last year, the San Francisco Giants only finished two games behind them in the National League West. Dusty Baker's a free agent at the end of the year. 2 2 pitch. Well hit left center, backing up pool, still racing. That's going to sail over his head. Up against the fence of Karens, and it'll be a double for Rich Aurelia. This is a guy they really need to get going. Batting in a three slot tonight. One for two. He's in scoring position. Dave, it's a double here. But what is it in just about any other ballpark, particularly in the National League? It's gone, yeah. <laughs> it says 404 out there that ball went 400 feet but it's not out of Pac Bell and that's that's how Dusty described the situation that his shortstop Rich really is in right now he goes it's kind of like being in Las Vegas and he says you're down the first two days you, you just get beat every day well some guys manage their money and try to get back into it other guys start doubling down well, Rich is doubling down right now. He, he, he knows the RBI totals down, the homers are down, and he's just pressing, trying to do too much. That time he doubled up into the left center field gap, and he's at second base in front of Reggie Sanders as the Giants try to get on the scoreboard against Jason Simontaki. Sanders walked in second inning. He was caught stealing. Reggie belted two home runs yesterday, and the Giants went over the Dodgers. Getting in Barry Bonds cleanup spot tonight and flies to right field. Marrero on the back cutter to make the count. And Aurelia will touch up and head into third. So Sanders flies out, but he gets that man just 90 feet away. That's a great point. Because that was a great at bat. He didn't just give himself up to sacrifice the runner. He tried to do it with authority. And he almost did. You see a lot of guys that just hit a weak ground ball the other way and everybody high fives them. Well, they did their job, but at times you can do a little bit more. Reggie Sanders almost did there. The venerable pitching coach of the Cardinals, Dave Duncan, coming to the hill. Looks like the Cardinals are going to bring in the infield as well here. Well, tomorrow at 8 Eastern on ESPN, ESPN has coined a new term to define the sports year. It's called the physical year, a period that begins in the fall and ends in late summer. Well, for the first time ever, ESPN presents a single list that ranks in order the athletes, the moments, the developments, the executives, the games, the thrills, everything that define the sports year. See ESPN 100 Tuesday night as it kicks off the block at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Big full moon looking down over San Francisco Bay. And Looking down on Jason Simon Tachi. Trying to keep this a nothing nothing game in the fourth inning. As Barry Bonds all bundled up. For the ailing hamstring looks on from the bench. He had an MRI late today on the hamstring. Everyone else getting bundled up too as those temperatures continue to fall. But no runs on the board yet. Aurelia at third. The infield is in for St. Louis. And you see now Simon Tachi is going to go out of the stretch because with one out, there's a possibility of a squeeze play. And we went out of the windup before with the man on third. There were two outs. Benito Santiago doubled in the second inning. He's hit in five consecutive games.
St. Louis with four hits, the Giants have three. The righties one nothing. In the dirt, knocked down by Matheny. A terrific play. That saves a run for the moment. You know, I, I just think back that there were a couple of catchers in my career that I knew they were going to block this ball. Matheny's one of those guys. You don't, I mean, you, you worry about it, you think about it, but if it doesn't hit the plate and have like a weird bounce, he's going to keep it in front of him. And that's the only reason that, that you have the ability to pitch to Benito here like you'd like to, which is bouncing those breaking balls. 2 0. Oh, here it comes. Ball three. So, not to name names, I don't want to make, make anybody look bad, but there were, there were catchers you pitched to in your career. Oh, yeah. You weren't going to throw that pitch under any circumstance. Well, I'm not going to mention those names. Yeah, that's what I mean. I'll mention the others. Guys like Jody Davis and 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 Damon Berryhill, Steve Yeager, they were automatic keeping those balls in front of them, as Mike Matheny is. 3 and 0. Oh. JT Snow, the on deck hitter. Aurelia at third. And it bounces away from Matheny, but no advance. Not too far, never got outside the batting circle on ball four. So Aurelia had to stay glued to third. And again, Matheny got enough of the glove on it. To prevent a run from being scored. That's that's a little bit surprising to me. Benito hit that double in his last at bat. That was a fastball there that Jason missed home plate by in his location a lot. This this is an automatic right here. I mean, you're you're hoping for a ground ball double play out of J.T. Snow, but you've got to open up that gap between the first and second baseman. That's where he hit the ground ball in his first at bat tonight. Snow 0 for 1. He's been doubled up on nine occasions this season. A 235 average. But he's been very good with men in scoring position. He's hitting almost 100 points higher. 333 with runners in scoring position. Right through that pitch, and it's 0 and 1. I mean, JT I, Snow is not 100% right. Dave, I just think you're leading yourself into the possibility of a big inning here by trying to keep one run from scoring. There's a good change up to get ahead in this count here. But so what if Benito hits a sacrifice fly? That's one run. All right, you're up against LeVon Hernandez. The Cardinals have had the leadoff hitter on three out of the four innings. Hit him, and the bases are loaded. Snow gets plunked. So now they're all filled up. And instead of pitching to Santiago, they walk him. And indeed, it's setting up as a big, big inning. The bases are jammed. Now, Tony La Russa wants to know why JT Snow made no effort to get out of the way. So he approaches Jim Wolf, the home plate umpire. Well, the reason he didn't make an effort is because these days you don't have to. You can put the Sir Lancelot stuff on that elbow if you want, if you think you're going to have to take a pitch like that. That's what being a teammate's all about there. That's going to hurt. But you know what? It leaves that pain. You wake up in the morning, you got a victory, and you find yourself tied for first. Base is loaded. And David Bell climbs in. He takes ball on him. Right now, Simon Tachi is all over the place. I go back to the at bat to Benito. He got out of sync on that at bat. He was throwing a lot of strikes. Everything was there. He couldn't have moved the sight at the end of his barrel off the outside corner. Didn't want to give in to Benito. He's got no place to put David Bell. Did he check? He did not. That's a strike on the swing, and it's one and one. Whether it was the right call or not, I like the fact that Jim Wolf took charge there. He didn't put his buddy down there at first base under the gun. Yeah, he called it at the plate, didn't leave it for Jerry Meals. Aurelia, Santiago, and Snow on the base paths for San Francisco. No score in the fourth. That one ran back inside to the corner, and it's one and two. Pretty cagey toss there by Simon Tachi. Well, he's also showing you what he's made of. With the late movement on that changeup. Now you put David Bell in a defensive position here. Throw something on the outer half of that plate with a little tilt to it. Get that ground ball you're looking for. 
St. Louis looking to turn two. Hard hit. Polanco to Vigna out there. Double play. Simon Tachi gets out of it. The resilient Cardinals hold. And that's the topic of Sut Soapbox. We'll take a good look at the Cardinals. Coming up, nothing, nothing in the middle of the fourth. We all know that the St. Louis Cardinals are in first place in the National League Central. But this has nothing to do with wins. It's about losses and how a team has persevered. From the very beginning of spring training, there was no Mark McGuire. Then Rick Ankiel went down. Then they lost Woody Williams to injuries. Eventually, they lost Jack Buck and also Daryl Kyle. People expected this team to collapse, but they didn't. And when you walk through their clubhouse, you see why, you feel why, you feel the love that this team draws from each other. In tragedy, you've got a couple of ways you can go. You can either grow apart or bond even closer together. And that's what the St. Louis Cardinals have done. It's been an unbelievable team effort in their manager, Tony La Russa's own words. Those Cardinals in a nothing nothing game here. And thanks to a double play that Simon Tachi got the Giants to bounce into with the bases loaded. And so the Cardinals, who came into the ball game with a three and a half game lead over Cincinnati in the Central, come to bat here in the fifth. Fernando Vina, the top of the order, to be followed by Polanco and then Edmonds. You know, Dave, you and I a couple of weeks ago were in St. Louis and having dinner at their longtime broadcaster Mike Shannon's restaurant and I remember walking to the back of it just for a moment and seeing Vindu with a base hit to center field to lead off the fifth. He's three for three tonight. And seeing Tony La Russa back in the back of the restaurant all by himself with a book. And we know what a great family man he is and all of the friends he has particularly in that city. But you know Tony was saying the next day we, you know, everybody needs their space. You know, and that clubhouse and this baseball field has been the space and, and really been where they have had a release, you know, just from all of the things that, that they have had to endure together. What a job he's done this year. And, you know, I think your point as Polanco steps in, he's 0 for 2 in this one, your point about how they've come together and might be the tightest clubhouse in baseball today, that can't be understated. And, and we did a game in St. Louis where Simon Tachi was at the bat, the rookie pitcher, and every one of their guys in the dugout was way up into the right corner of the dugout. Every one of them gathered together, cheering him on. And uh, it was pretty remarkable to see that. You don't see that in, in a major league dugout too often. You know, the players were saying today that it, it's somewhat like a broken bone. You know how they say when it finally heals, when you finally get over the pain and the suffering, Supposedly the bone stronger than it once was. And if that's the case, come October, there could be some incredible strength coming from that St. Louis Cardinals team. The 0 1 pitch, she tried to check and did, and the count one ball and one strike to Polanco. And right now is where Tony La Russa starts to manage, and nobody knows that better than the Giants manager, Dusty Baker. And in a one run decision, we've said it many times, it usually comes down to one manager or the other. Do you put on the hit and run here? If you do, do you do you counter it with a pitch out? The throw over Vinia dives in safely. See, to me it looked like the hit and run was on there. For JT Snow. Anybody get that tag down quicker than him? And he didn't even have a good handle on the throw from Devon Hernandez. Yeah, it stuck right in the palm. Looked like something was on there. You'd have to think it was the hit and run. Now, whether it's still on or not, well, that's what we're both going to watch and see together. The 1 1 he's holding. Luke to right. And Sanders moves over to his right. One down. Let's go to Kevin Court for an update. Kevin. All right, fellas, we have another run in the Rockies Diamondbacks game. Matt Williams, just five Matt hits Williams. this season. Two of them, round trippers. That one makes it 2 nothing. Arizona in the bottom of the fifth at Bank One Ballpark. So the Arizona Diamondbacks in first place, leading these Giants by one game. 
Looking like they mean to hang on to it for themselves for a while longer. Kurt Schilling on the mound for Arizona tonight. I saw a number the other day on him. In his last 19 decisions against the National League West, he's 18 and 1. <laughs> Oh, that that has to give you a little pause if you're if you're the Dodgers or the Giants, huh? Wow. Just a little. Being you back in again. One out, the hitter Jim Edmonds. Quiet so far tonight. He is 0 for 2. Cardinals have had a couple of chances to score, so have the San Francisco Giants. But Levon Hernandez and Jason Simontacci have made big pitches. In the clutch. Levon really made a big pitch there to Polanco, not giving him anything he could get on top of and hit on the ground. The four seam fastball on the outer half resulted in another easy out. Levon Hernandez, only 27 years old, so has a lot more innings left to pitch. And he's been regularly up around 225, 230 innings a year since he broke in. And yet there are those rumors about possibly being on the trade block and the Giants willingness to give him up. And he is seven and ten coming into tonight. Swing a high fly ball deep to center. Shinjo backing up. He's at the track. Backs into the wall. It is gone. A two run homer for Jim Edmonds. And it's the Cardinals on the board two to nothing. Number 19 for the Cardinal center fielder. We mentioned he was a little quiet heading into that at bat. Well, that was a noisy swing. To dead away center field over the 399 mark. A lot of people think right now this is what's called down the stretch. And last year, Jim Edmonds hit just under 350 in that situation, carrying these St. Louis Cardinals into the postseason. Well, he picked on a big part of the ballpark. We know this time of night it's not going to carry. It didn't need to. He hit it that hard. Just clearing the fence and out of the reach of Shinjo. 2 nothing, St. Louis. As Pujols fouls one away, he's gone 0 for 1 this evening. So Jim Edmonds strikes for the 19th time with a big fly. Well, he hit some high home runs. I mean, we were talking about Gary Sheffield earlier tonight. Gary Sheffield sometimes rips them about 20 feet off the ground. They don't get any higher than that. And you're, you're afraid they're going to smash a seat if they hit one, but uh, Edmonds gives you plenty of time. If you're the outfielder or the umpire or the play by play guy to, to really get prepared. You know, and, and Levon Hernandez is giving the St. Louis Cardinals a lot of time and a lot of opportunities to score runs. He just doesn't seem to be really into it. He's not bearing down on that first hitter. Four out of five times now, the leadoff hitter has been on. But this is the first time they've touched home. Foul off again by Pujols. Tino Martinez to bat next. You know, the, the Giants talk about when Levon is into it, I mean, he can pitch. Well, well, how are you not into it? You know, I mean, that's the difficult part for them to understand. Is it, is it because he's so young? 27 years of age. I mean, we have to, to remember he, he really came here with nothing. From and, Cuba. And was rich overnight. Ground ball shot toward the hole. Diving down Aurelia, and he won't have a play. It'll be a base hit for Albert Pujols on an 0 2 pitch. He's one for two. I just love the effort. They, they, these guys play hard. Whether they're healthy or not, the Giants have <laughs> always played as hard as any team in the league. Look at David Bell. All right, watch Aurelia. He knows he's got no play at first unless something happened running down the baseline with Albert Pujol. If he fell, if he didn't get out of the box. Well, you know what? You don't know that unless you grab the baseball and you jump up, ready to make a throw and take a look. Pujols on with his single. Martinez going after the first pitch, knocks it down the left field line, but it slices out of play. And, and back to LeVon Hernandez, and your point about age, I mean, now he's 27. Feels like LeVon Hernandez, because he's appeared in the postseason pretty often, and he's been on the national stage so long. It feels like he's a lot older than 27, but did he have too much success too soon at the age of 22, pitching into a World Series, was the MVP of the National League Championship Series and the World Series? 
I'm thinking too on Tino. Did it come too easily for him, I guess? Well, it seems that way. Because at times, because of his body language, to me, it, it almost looks like he's bored out there. Like he's really not sure that, that that's where he wants to be. And a lot of ability there. He, he, he can throw any pitch at any time over for a strike, but too many times he just makes mistakes. And you know, you can't do that against good teams, and the Cardinals just proved it. In tight, one ball and two strikes. There were a lot of rumors that the Giants had interest in his half brother and El Duque. He's serving a suspension right now, I saw. The one two to the plate. Yanked into right field for a base hit. So they're chasing. Levon Hernandez and now Pujols heading into third throw there tag and he's out. He tried to get aggressive and he paid the price there. Two away. You know it could be six to nothing right now if it weren't for the terrific defense the San Francisco Giants have played this year and they're showing off tonight. A great diving catch back in the top of the third inning by Tom Goodwin and now just a perfect relay executed by Reggie Sanders to Rich Aurelia to David Bell. That's good hustle. You know, from time to time they're going to get you. You don't want to make the first out there or the third out there. He does make the second. Well you don't want to make the second either. <laughs> but that's better than than either of the other. I thought for a moment maybe he he detected. Sanders bobbling the ball but Reggie got to it in good shape made a clean play. And the count on Renteria two balls no strikes. Edgar has singled and drawn a walk tonight. There have been four hits in the inning off Levon Hernandez. Three singles and a two run homer that off the bat of Jim Edna. This is a tough thing right here. We've mentioned earlier that these two were teammates with the world champs. I'm sure they're good friends. And that was always the toughest guy to get out. You know, your buddy. He knows you're not going to knock him down. Three and one. And if you're not perfect on that outside corner or you don't fool him with something off speed, I mean, he knows everything you've got. I mean, Renteria is only about 50 feet behind him for that whole season. You got nothing to trick him with. You just have to hit good spots. Or he's going to hit you. Two nothing St. Louis, a Dusty Baker's club behind in the fifth inning. Three one now all filled up. Renteria has certainly made his old friend work tonight. You know, and I think he's he's using his mind a little bit there. He knows he's got to see another strike. He knows now that with the count full and two outs that the base runner is going to get a jump and he's got a better opportunity to drive something in if he's able to hit the ball hard. The runner goes the three two pitch chuck off the glove of Lamont Hernandez but really a collection and that's all. But it's the Cardinals finally here at the midway point in the fifth inning breaking through on a high towering fly to dead center by Jim Edmonds. The unmistakable big mitt at Pac Bell in San Francisco. Cardinals ahead 2 0 thanks to Jim Edmonds and a two run homer. It is on to the bottom of the fifth. Shinjo, Levon Hernandez, and then Tom Goodwin coming up to bat against Jason Simon Tachi. A terrific story. The man from nowhere who has gone to seven and one and really become the savior of a decimated St. Louis pitching staff. A rotation and a staff that was in dire need of help even before the tragic death of Daryl Kyle. High fly left center field, but it's going to falter out there and into the mid of Edmonds. Shinjo hit it fairly well, but Edmonds hit his a ton, and you really have to. And the ball does not carry on a night like tonight in San Francisco. 
Barry Bonds, well, he can hit it out of any park, any time of day or night, but he's hurt right now, and here's how it happened on Friday when he hurt the hamstring against the Dodgers chasing this triple by Eric Carlos and then went down on the warning track, and everybody knew that Barry Bonds had a hamstring injury immediately. Had an MRI on it late today. We still haven't heard the results of that MRI, but Barry is here at the ballpark, obviously. And uh, there is the chance that if he feels up to it, he could pinch hit in this game. We haven't been told otherwise. Becky he thought about it yesterday in a ball game on Sunday. You know, as a baseball fan, I'm hoping that there's nothing serious there. Watching him walk around the clubhouse this afternoon, there wasn't a real favorable type limp involved. But in the game of baseball, you, you, you have to do a lot more than walk. Of course, most of the time, Barry is able to jog. <laughs> After he does what he does best. And they say hitting wise, no problems. It's all about running. Liner into left field and a base hit by Lamont Hernandez. So he's gone one for two tonight. If you are searching for a baseball tonight, we invite you to switch on over to ESPN2. It's on right now. But here the Cardinals have a 2 nothing lead in the bottom of the fifth. LeVon Hernandez with his 11th hit of the year. He has always been able to swing the bat. Also a very talented fielder. I mean, he may not look the part, but he's a marvelous athlete. And especially when he keeps his weight down, which he has struggled to do ever since he came from Cuba. But he is a, a very gifted athlete. He you was know, a pretty gifted athlete standing at home plate right now. At one time, I, I think he was the fastest guy in all of baseball, that being Tom Goodwin. And he showed a little bit about what baseball means to him this year. He could have walked, gone home, received all of his money. Grounds that one to Renteria. He feeds Pena for the out on the first, not in time. So that speed still on display as Goodwin beats the wrap. No double play. Two out. There aren't very many people. I mean, I, I think of Ichiro, he could have beat that. I look at him right there. He just kicks it into a gear that most people don't have. But he could have gone home. He, and he thought about it. You know, when the Giants were going to send him down, he had a lot of big league service. He made a bunch of money. And maybe that was it. But he, he changed his mind. And what Dusty Baker was saying today was that he never complained. You know, we, we hadn't always heard that in the past about Tom. He wanted to be in the lineup. He, he wanted to do this, wanted to do that. And a funny story, just a week ago, him and Sean Dunstan had a home run contest. And everybody was laughing because that's the last thing that Tom Goodwin was ever told to do. But right. Sean said, come on, let's have fun. Well, what's he win the game with yesterday? He did it with a home run. He beat the Dodgers. The team that's paying him. Not to play for them, but to play for the San Francisco Giants now. You know, the Dodgers have made a lot of great decisions. It's amazing with all the injuries, what they've done. But, you know, there's a guy there that, that they released. They also, last spring, released Craig Council. Mm -hmm. A lot of stolen bases. He has stolen seven this year in eight tries. Not running. But that one's hit down the left field line. Pools gives chase. Goodwin flying in the third. It's misplayed by Pools. He slipped. Here comes the run as Goodwin will score. It is two to one. Pools had all sorts of trouble out there on the grass in left field, and it cost him. It's a one run game. Well, once again, we're seeing why speed is so important in the game of baseball. The inning would have been over with the double play, but Tom Goodwin beat that out. And he was also on his way to third base, which Albert Pujols knew. He wanted to get to it quickly. He wanted to get the throw to second base to keep the possible tying run from getting in the scoring position. But that aggressiveness and an in-between hop created an error, possibly, and an opportunity for the Giants to tie this up with just a single. So Pujols will be charged with an error. It's a double for Martinez, but no RBI for Ramon Martinez. Samatachi touched up for two hits in this frame. And it's not over yet. Here's Rich Aurelio. 
He's bounced into a double play and doubled. He's one for two. He takes a strike. So Simon Tachi trying to keep a lead. But it's been cut in half here in the fifth inning. No Barry Bonds tonight. No Jeff Kent tonight. Bonds with a hamstring. Kent just fatigued and in need of a rest. Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> I on both counts. The moment the Giants trying to do it out. Did he swing? He did not. As Jerry Meals says, you're all right, Rich Aurelia. One and one. Get awful close here. Did a nice job of selling the fact that he might not have taken a swing at it, but more times than not, that's going to be called. Really, on the recent road trip for the Giants through St. Louis and Los Angeles was just two for 20. Did the double in the fourth inning heat him up? We compare the two starters, Simon Tachi and Hernandez. Levon has pitched one more out in his start tonight. Well, that's using mirrors to allow all those base runners and only allow two runs. Either that or it's terrific defense, which probably was both tonight for Levon. 13 hits total. And two and one. Off the end of the bat foul. Well, Tom Goodwin's had a lot to say in this one. He's just scored the first giant run. Remember, he made that terrific sprawling catch with the bases loaded out in left field. And you're talking about how hard these two clubs go after one another, the Giants and the Cardinals. And this is game one of a four game series. And Goodwin's already winded. A lot of people that think these two teams will be going after each other in the month of October again. The tying run at second. Aurelia, a big RBI man a season ago, and he drove in 97 runs for the Giants. Martinez there in the 2 2. Full count. These games don't mean a whole lot, but when the Giants are able to go out there and possibly beat the Cardinals without Jeff Kent and Barry Bond, now that's saying something. Three and two, two out. The pitch. He walked him. So Aurelia is on. And before Sanders bats, let's go to Kevin Court. Kevin. All right, Dave and Rick, thanks very much. Luis Gonzalez looking for a two out hit in the sixth inning. And well, he found one right there. His 19th home run of the season. Suddenly, it's a 3 0 lead for Arizona. Luga looking good. 19 for Gonzalez. Meanwhile, here in San Francisco, Duncan out to the hill for the second time tonight to talk Simon Tachi through another rough spot first and second two away. Well Gonzalez is playing well right now. He hasn't been hitting on all cylinders as far as offensively but he hit a home run yesterday. Now he's got one again today. He also went up over the fence and brought a home run back. So Arizona and a lot of their big guys getting things together. You know and, and, and even with all of the injuries Kevin Brown down and what have you. Well, Dodgers just won't go away. Reggie Sanders with a base hit can tie this one up. He's walked and flying to right. Hitting 305 over his last 25 games. He's been making very good contact. Samatachi so starts him with a strike, but going back to last Wednesday in St. Louis and facing Simon Tachi. He drove this one off the end of the bat to right field and got it out of the park. An indication of how strong Sanders is. He's hit 14 home runs. Two of them yesterday against Los Angeles. Nothing in two here. That was, by the way, the third time this year Reggie Sanders had hit two home runs in a single game. And uh, just for fun, I went back and looked at Barry Bonds last year, and he had 73 home runs. Ten times, two home runs or more. 
That's pretty good. Nothing in two. First and second, two out. Got a piece of it. He's still alive. You know, Reggie Sanders is real good with pitches in the strike zone, whether it be a fastball or a breaking ball. But the reason offensively he's been so streaky is that those same holes still exist with him. You're going to chase that off speed stuff down and away, and you can climb the ladder on the inside part of the plate with that fastball. You make a mistake, he'll let you know in a hurry. See where Simon Tachi goes with this pitch. Bounding ball to Polanco. He will tag out the runner, and that'll end it as he gets Martinez. To retire the side. A couple of men left though. Two to one, St. Louis. ESPN's Monday Night Baseball brought to you by King Swiss. It's a Monday night by the bay in San Francisco, California. Rick Sutcliffe, Dave O'Brien joining you. Your baseball hosts as we kick off another baseball week. Two to one, St. Louis. One of the big stories for the Cardinals there, the left hander Chuck Finley, the veteran, went up against the Pirates yesterday, pitched well in a victory, eight strikeouts in his first ball game for St. Louis since the trade from Cleveland. He has pitched well for a long time. And what a huge lift that could be for this ball club. And you know what? If there's any team in baseball that deserves something positive, that team does. Change here for the San Francisco Giants. They're going to bring Sean Dunstan into play right field. That means Reggie Sanders, who reached base on that fielder's choice in a final play of the fifth inning, is stepping out. Not sure exactly what is up with Reggie yet. As soon as we get a report, we'll pass it along to you. But uh, something's up with Sanders. And already tonight, the Giants could not start Barry Bonds because of the hamstring injury and Jeff Kent was fatigued and needed a night off and uh, you know, the flu bug has been making its way through the giant clubhouse. I'll tell you what too I can see where these leg injuries are coming from it, it's it's flat out cool here tonight and everybody else around the country is playing in heat I mean, you don't need to stretch a whole lot to stay loose. Eli Marrero stings a base hit to start the sixth for the Cardinals. He's one for three. I saw Shinjo in the giant clubhouse walking around before the game with a big old ice pack on his leg. I mentioned berries many times. Wouldn't surprise me at all if, if it had something to do with the legs of Reggie Sanders. Mike Matheny, the catcher for the Cardinals, had a very good night behind the plate so far. Nothing wrong with the legs of Eli Marrero. Now he can use them. For a guy who catches some, he's an absolute burner. And Levon Hernandez knows it. Marrero with 11 stolen bases. He's only been caught once. And I'm really surprised that they've not tested Levon Hernandez tonight. Opponents this year have been successful 16 of 18 times in the stolen base department. Dusty Baker telling me today that six times during those no stolen base attempt, Benito Santiago hasn't even attempted a throw. Having it again, but closer this time. Marrero is safe. And he's about as far as he's going to go on that lead. Well, you, you know how far you can get right now. All right, that's it. And that's a one-way lead there. You could see immediately his first step was back. And that's by design. You want to see how far you can get. Most of the time when you do that, it's because of a hit and run type situation. You're not really trying to steal with the biggest possible lead. File back. Nothing in one on Matheny. It was 0 for 2 this evening. He's fly to right, grounded out to third against Hernandez, and in his career against Levon, just one out of 20. A lot of math going on right now. Dave McKay, the first base coach, takes a look at his little timer he has in his right hand, letting Eli Morel know exactly. How long is taking Levon Hernandez to get to home plate? They know the time of Benito's throw. They'll add that up and tell Eli just exactly what kind of a jump he's got to get to beat that combination. Snow holding him over there at first base, obviously, and a big hole on the right side. If 
Matheny can shoot it through there. Two one St. Louis in the sixth. They got them both on an Edmonds homer. And is keeping Marrero very busy. You know another thing Dusty did early. He called for a pitch out, and you did too on the same play, and, and it didn't work. There wasn't anything on. But he put that into the mind of the opposing manager. So what? You throw one ball. If you keep him from running the rest of the series, then it did work. Shot. Nice scoop by Bell. He tries the second, not in time, but out at first base. But Marrero got there before the throw. What a play. These guys have put on a clinic tonight defensively. It started with Goodwin out there in left field. We've seen Sanders with a strong throw and a relay by Aurelia. We've seen Aurelia die. Now watch David Bell. Look at him trying to force the issue. He's got, what the heck? I mean, he got the ball so quickly, he knew there was plenty of time to get Matheny at first base. Take a shot here. Look at Morel. You almost hurt him. I mean, he wasn't expecting that. Neither was I. But you know what? That's just David Bell has grown up around the game of baseball. He knows little things that go on, and he almost pulled off that double play. Able to get one out at first base on a 5-4-3 that is not a double play. <laughs> but he took a chance. Also a good play with a pitcher coming up next. And Simon Tachi, one out of two with a base hit. You know, David's dad knew a little bit about playing third base. And his dad, buddy, one of the best oh over goodness. there. Talk about a, a family with soft hands. I remember Buddy down in Texas, the old stadium, and how hard that infield would get because of the heat and just the shots that were hit at him, and it, it just didn't matter. A one pitch, a bluff bunt by Simon Tachi. I used to hate Buddy Bell as a kid because no way. Yeah, every time he played my Red Sox, oh. <laughs> he beat us to death. It would always be a two-run homer or a great defensive play. <laughs> I hated Buddy Bell. Okay, now I understand. <laughs> this is one of the nicest people I've ever oh, met in my life. He's a competitor. Great guy. But a pain. Line drive caught by Hernandez. Lobbed a second double play. End of the inning. Look what LeBron found. A line shot by Simon Tachi. Right back into the pitcher's glove. That's robbery there, and he turns two with it. Bottom of the sixth inning at Pac Bell in San Francisco. The Cardinals holding a two to one lead. Out hitting the Giants 9 5. One of the reasons it's so close is. We've had a bevy of terrific defensive plays. And a lot of the Giants defensive plays. They've hung in there and so have their fans and what's become a cool and clear night in Northern California. Tom Goodwin made a marvelous sprawling catch out in left field. So filling in for Bonds, he's done good work. Nothing clear about who's going to win this ball game yet. Not by a long shot. It is on to the bottom of the sixth and here's Benito Santiago. Perfect night for him so far, a double and a walk. One thing that's pretty clear though, and that's the fact that Jason Samatachi can pitch a little bit. Just feel the confidence. Look at him on the mound, ready to get in. I'm ready to go. And breaking ball off the plate, one ball, one strike. Samatachi. With a full pass list tonight. About a hundred friends and family here watching. From nearby San Jose, where he went to high school. Top foul by Benito. One ball, two strikes. I, I really enjoyed hanging out with him in, in St. Louis a couple weeks ago when we were there. He had some of his friends from out here in the San Francisco area there with him. And <laughs> That morning that they go to breakfast and they had a little 299 special. 
And they all chipped in. They said, it's the way it's always been. We don't care if you're in the big league. Which we, we, we hold our own. Well, that night they had a gift certificate to go to a nice restaurant that he had received from a pregame show. Well, they got to the door and they go, no, we're, we're not going in here. Swing and a miss, and Santiago strikes out. One away in the sixth. Jay showed him the gift certificate. <laughs> they couldn't believe it. Wait, this is free? The big leagues, man. Let's go to Kevin Cork for an update, Kevin. All right, fellas, thanks very much. Want to check on the Dodgers and Padres. 21 hits combined between the two clubs and Padres. Well, they're having the better end of it. Bubba Trammell's eighth of the year, making it a 5-1 lead for the Padres. He's three for four tonight. Well, the Dodgers' second half swoon is continuing tonight in San Diego, at least for the moment. How about Brian Lawrence pitching tonight, going for his ninth win for the Padres, just barely not eligible to be a rookie. He's faced the Dodgers four times this year and has had their number all four. That's a, the most impressive part to me about Simon Tachi. He already this year has gone back to back starts against Kansas City and pitched well. Back to back in his last two against San Diego and now the previous start against Frisco. Here he is again pitching well. Only the second time around teams start to adjust to you. Well you know what he's got the ability to readjust and contend. Tossing a five hitter at the moment. He has the lead and got that off speed pitch by JT Snow. Who's grounded out and been hit by a pitch. He really should have a shutout. The double play wasn't quite turned. And Pujols had trouble with the double. I, I just like how intelligent he is. He, he's given up some balls that have been hit hard and hit a long way. But you know what? They're hit to the opposite field. Aurelia was really the only one that pulled a ball with authority, and all he could do was get it to the 404 sign. You let him pull that ball into the gap or down the line, it, it's out of the ballpark. But that's by design. Because when he's going hard, he's going hard away, and you're just not able to pull that fastball. On the fourth inning, the Giants loaded the bases with one down, and he did not cave in there. Hammered into the ground by Snow, and the count one ball, two strikes. He had hit J.T. Snow with a pitch to load him up. Then he was facing David Bell. And he got Bell to hit into the double play to retire the side. Watch the late movement. You see the glove of Matheny. He wants it down. That's about all you can do with that pitch. Another one down low two and two. Now one thing he is uh, not done tonight and apparently hasn't done it all year. Does not throw up in the strike zone does he? doesn't use the heart of the plate much. I mean, it's kind of like you tell your kids growing up, you don't let them play in the middle of the road. You know, you throw a baseball in the middle of the plate, and you, you, you're going to get hurt. He doesn't do that very often. I see he had him set up perfectly there. When JT didn't go for that last breaking ball down and then all he had to do was throw a fastball in the inner half. Yeah, he's going to try to get it there again. Little bloop shot, right center field, falling fast, and it's in for a hit. A single for J.T. Snow. A one out base hit. No one caught that one but they've been catching everything else in the third inning. On a play at the plate Bell fired home to get Simon Tachi. With the bases loaded Goodwin with a terrific sprawling play in the outfield. Pujols got a little greedy but on the relay throw into Bell he's out at third base. In the sixth inning. A line drive into a double play handled by LeVon Hernandez. So we've seen a bunch of them. You know, and I just looked at the little things on those replays. David Bell jumping up to get that high chopper, to get a little bit quicker, to get the exchange going, and the throw to home plate a little bit quicker. And how about Rich Aurelia on the relay throw from Reggie Sarant? I mean, he was in perfect position and just turned up that, that clock a little bit, if you will, with a perfect throw to nail Pujols. The other thing you notice is Bell is in most of the highlights one way or another. Yeah. And here he is to swing taking a strike. Bull for one hitting 249. The Cardinals with bullpen activity they get Crudale up the right hander starts to loosen. One out one on here. Simon Tachi to the plate and out.
outside. Both of these teams just incredibly deep in that bullpen area. A couple of left handers, neither manager is afraid to use. Three or four right handers that, that can not only, you know, come in and, and pitch well, but they can pitch with the lead. And that's a big difference. The guys pitch with a lot of leads, Mike Timlin. And the giant bullpen ranks second in the National League, filed off. Look back to Jason Simontachi's last start, which came against the San Francisco Giants. And tonight, three strikeouts. He struck out only one on July 17th. It was at Bush Stadium. Well, that, that's the criteria for a quality start. Six innings and three earned runs or less. You're supposed to win those games. Run tonight against him is unearned. How about this? There has not been a stolen base off Jason yet this year. Now, is he that hard to run on? Is he that quick to the plate? Not taking anything away from Mike Matheny. I mean, he, he's real good as well. But I bet Simon Tachi, I don't have Dave McKay's stopwatch to tell you exactly, but I'll bet it's under 1-6. If you're under two, point, you know, two seconds getting it to home plate, Matheny's got plenty of time to throw anybody out. Looks like everybody's under two seconds. <laughs> That's a, a low percentage for a guy with an arm like him. Two runner stays put, and it's another three and two count. Both starters, Amatachi and Ivan Hernandez, have had plenty of deep counts. Sanatachi has walked four when he's hit a batter. You know, in the past, David Bell was such a free swinger, and you'd be reluctant to send the runner, but he has cut down on that strikeout total. He's drawing more walks. And it takes off and it's squib foul. And that's why right there he, he, he's thinking more about that off speed pitch. He's using the opposite field even more just just becoming a, a more complete hitter. And because of that you're going to get more playing time. Look at his head. Watch what he does. Right. Look at the head down on the baseball. That's an outstanding pitch. You can tell that by Matheny's glove staying down on the outside corner. Yet Bell able to get a piece of it and hopes that he gets a mistake to hit on the next pitch. Simon Tachi to throw his 100th pitch here. Snow running again, and it is ball four. So he's walked his fifth man. And what is in the mind of Tony Larusa here? As Brudel continues to warm up. First and second, one out. Two base runners on. So Yoshi Shinjo about to swing. Fans, this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Take part in Major League Baseball history. You can vote for your most memorable moment at every Major League ballpark or online at MLB.com. You decide because, after all, these moments belong to you. Simon Tachi. Trying to negotiate his way through some oh, no, no. high water here, and he fires in a strike to get in front of Shinjo, who has fly to left and fly to center. He's looking for another double play ball, Simon Tachi is. They've turned two for him twice tonight. Oh. That's low. One and one. I was asking Dusty about Shinjo's average just being 240. He said nobody on their team's hitting tougher luck than he had. He said, so you know how things even out over the course of the year. He thinks Shinjo is going to hit a period where everything he hits starts to drop in rather than being caught. Let's see if it starts here. Yeah. That one goes through in the right for a hit. Here comes Snow rounding third. They're going to try and score him. Herrero stroll. The tag collision. Oh, what a collision. He hung on for the out at home. Mike Matheny took a shot from J.T. Snow. 
and he hung on to the baseball. And the Cardinals still lead it here two to one because Matheny absorbed the shock. Snow just plowing into him, tucking the shoulder. And look, look at Matheny right back up again. How many bases has he saved tonight by keeping balls in front of him that were bounced? Well, we know one thing. He saves a run here and possibly a lot more. Look at him secure the baseball. You could not have a more difficult in-between hop than the one he's got. He knows there's a collision going to happen. He knows what's waiting on him, but he also knows his job. That's to hang on to the baseball, and he did it perfectly. He knocked two helmets off. My goodness, Snows went flying, Matheny's went flying, but Matheny hung on. That'll do it for Simon Tachi. La Russa takes him out of the ball game, but it remains the Cardinals two, the Giants one, and we'll be back. Mike Crudale on to pitch to Levon Hernandez here with two out on the bottom of the sixth inning. Runners at second and third for the Giants. The numbers on Crudale, whose command has been very good. He struck out 20 batters. Walking just three men in 24 and a third inning. 25 years of age. This is a pretty good 24th round draft pick for the Cardinals back in 99. And we'll find at a 1 0 pitch foul back by LeBron Hernandez. There are managers who would say it's not too early in a game situation like this to lift the starter and go to a serious bat. But in LeBron Hernandez, you already have one. Does have a base hit tonight. And he's only hitting 282. 11 hits on the year, and he also drives in runs. Already six RBIs. Two balls, one strike. Levon Hernandez's pitch count is also in line with 89. But for the Giants in this inning, two singles and a walk, and yet they have failed to score here in the sixth. Thanks to the throw by Marrero. Simon Tachi has been lifted and still leading as JT Snow was nailed at home plate moments ago. Three and one on LeVon Hernandez. Well, you know, another thing too for Dusty Baker, I mean, what does he have left to pinch hit with? You throw Miner up there, they would probably intentionally pass him, take their chances on Tom Goodwin. You don't know the availability of Barry Bonds. You don't know about Jeff Kent. Reggie Sanders has already come out of the ball game. Well, that's right. It's kind of a short roster tonight. But Dusty, a pop-up on the infield. Coming in, Vigna. And he'll make the catch for out number three. So two men left. And the St. Louis bullpen holds there as the Cardinals maintain the 2-1 lead for Simon Tachi at the end of six in San Francisco. 2-1 St. Louis, and there's Mike Matheny descending the dugout steps after that tremendous collision at home plate which he hung on to tag out JT Snow and Rick we've talked all night about the unshakable character and play of the St. Louis Cardinals and that was more evidence right there. You know we were looking for a possible save tonight from Jason Isringhausen or Rob Nen, but there's already been one recorded. That was an unbelievable play. If he didn't come up with that ball and it kicks off of him at least one run's going to score. A couple might have on that ball and yet because of his defense and desire he not only caught the baseball, took the blow, and kept the lead. And Snow denied. He never even got to home plate. How many catches do we know? We'll go up in front of home plate, catch it, turn, and then look for it. Well, by then he scored. It's too late. Matheny knows that. And that's why all of those teammates were there to high five him. On to the seventh. It's been a good one. Two to one, the Cardinals. And here's Vigna, who's had a very good night. He has not made an out. Two singles and a double off LeVon Hernandez. He's a 412 career hitter off this right hander. So he's in there with a whole lot of confidence. Top of the order for St. Louis. 2 0. Let's go ahead and put him on. I mean, that's been the plan tonight. Let the leadoff guy get on. It's happened five out of the six innings for the Cardinals, but only in one of those frames, that being the top of the fifth. Did anybody score? And that was on an Edmonds homer, a two run shot. And he's not far away from stepping up to home plate again. Three and nothing on Vinian. Polanco will bat in front of Edmonds. 
And Hernandez comes in to the corner for a strike. This is a night on which Dusty Baker did not have Barry Bonds or Jeff Kent available to play, at least not yet. Kent getting a rest. Bonds out with a hamstring injury, although not on the DL. It hard in for it Bell. And with his short hands, he makes the play. A lot of baseball coming up on Wednesday here on ESPN. It kicks off at 1 o'clock. The Braves and the Marlins from South Florida at 7 p.m. right here from Northern California, presented by Jiffy Lube. Another one between the Cardinals and the Giants. They've all been terrific games. The Yankees and the Indians on ESPN 2 at 7, or the Devil Rays at the Boston Red Sox. And here on Wednesday, Kirk Reeder comes in 7 and 6. Andy Bennis, a guy who refused to sign his retirement papers in April. He's back in their rotation for now. It's pretty well as return to the rotation the other day. Really it gobbles and fires to get Polanco and there are two out. As Andy Bennis doesn't throw as hard as he used to. But was pretty effective his last trip. To the pitcher's mound. And the uh, Cardinals are really not picky about where their help comes. When it comes to pitching. Well, they, they think they're going to get some help when Woody Williams comes back. Boy, how big was he for them down the stretch when acquired in a trade with the San Diego Padres, seven and one, and then carried that great pitching on over into the postseason. Edmonds swinging away on the first pitch, and he's gone one for three with a two run homer this evening. The Cardinal rotation. A little bit of a drop off when you get to Simon Tachi and Smith, huh? <laughs> Chuck Finley with a 194 wins, the newest Cardinal pitcher. Yeah, well, Matt Morris is going to close that gap on those guys above him before it's all said and done. He sure will. Tapped along the first base line, and that will roll foul. Two strikes on Edmonds, who blasted a home run straight up into the sky in the fifth inning. And it kept on carrying and carrying. And baseballs don't usually do that here in San Francisco at this hour, but up it went. And up and over the glove of Soyoshi Shinjo, the center fielder. Well, you know, he actually picked on one of the smaller parts of this ballpark, just 399 there. Wouldn't have gone out to 404. Definitely wouldn't have gone out to 421. But the dead center, it did go out. The 0 2. Hernandez can't put him away. Let's see if that outside corner won't grow a little bit. Started on the corner, but the movement took it away. The 1 2 pit. Down and in. Now. Reggie Sanders had to leave the game at the midway point. He started in right field this evening. And we understand now it's because of tightness in his right hamstring. And Rick, you were talking about the cool climate, how chilly it is tonight. Guys just forget to continue to stretch. They do it during the month of April and they do it in September, but they don't expect to need that during July. We do here. Three and two on Edmonds. And I know Reggie Sanders is a guy who practices yoga. And does a lot of stretching, but tonight just couldn't stay loose, apparently. You know, he could throw 200. Yeah, he could. I mean, he, he knows how to change speeds. That's a rubber arm. The payoff hit. He walks Edmonds. Pretty good at bat for Jim Edmonds. He was in the hole 0 and 2 and winds up taking a free pass with two out. We've already seen an intentional free pass offered to Albert Pujols tonight. We saw why in his next at bat when he got a base hit. This is this is a little nervous time. Dusty Baker pacing that dugout because he knows with each look Albert Pujols gets at Levon Hernandez, his odds of getting a hit, and when he gets hits, normally they're not just little meaningless singles. Now 23 of them have gone over the fence. Gets ahead with him, strike one. 
Pujols has grounded out, been intentionally walked, and singled. Pujols, a young hitter. This is just his second year at the major league level. But one of the most impressive things about Pujols is his ability to hit with two strikes and his willingness, Rick, to hit with two strikes. There's so many young hitters refuse to do it. We just saw it on the first pitch. He was taken all the way. And that's by design. It's not that he wants to hit with two strikes, but he'd like to get the count in his favor. But to do that, you can't be afraid to fall behind. Swing and a miss, and now he is in the hole. Nothing and two. Two out, a man on. 2 1 St. Louis, seventh inning. Dave O'Brien, Rick Sutcliffe, and activity for Dusty Baker. Rohan Alepti, Dave Matasic, the right hander. And the 0 2 will not be made as the runner, Edmonds, gets back in. And you mentioned. A little bit surprised the Cardinals have not been as active on the bases tonight. We thought they might be. Teams have had a lot of success running against Levon Hernandez this year. Tony La Russa always won looking for an opportunity to be aggressive. And he stays put and it's up and away. You know, Tony too can get the same reports we do Reggie Sanders out with a hamstring he knows about bonds he knows about Shinjo he can't afford to lose Jim Edmonds and it's not a bad idea just sitting back and watching how the pools yeah it's worked out pretty well 75 runs batted in for him the one two popped him up in right there's John Dunstan for the play. And that'll do it. No runs or hits. One man left. We go to the bottom of the seventh at Pac Bell. It's two to one, St. Louis. ESPN's Monday Night Baseball brought to you by Pep Boys. Help for your car is just a Pep Boys away. Pep Boys, we're car people. The fans in San Francisco at lovely Pac Bell Park have had their stretch. The Cardinals with a two to one lead. St. Louis slightly ahead in hits. And defense and pitching has really carried the night. Some spectacular defensive plays. And there have been two runners erased at home plate in this game. Tom Goodwin has made a marvelous sprawling catch in the outfield. The base is loaded. He'll lead off this inning. Bluffing a bunt, he takes a strike. You thought he might attempt to bunt for a base hit, as we talked about in between innings, and so did Tony La Russa. You can't get much tighter at the corners or up the middle than he is on Tom Goodwin. Gabriel fires in and scooped up by Matheny, who has just been a human vacuum behind home plate for the Cardinals tonight. And you know, this team has to improve at being the Cardinals with what they do on the road. Tremendous at home with a 31 and 18 record, two games under 500, went away from Bush Stadium. Two balls and a strike on Goodwin, and longtime baseball logic says split on the road and just murder everybody at home. But on the road, if you're going to be a playoff team, a real contender, you got to be 500 outside of your own building and take two out of three at home. Shot toward left center, but there's no alley out there. It's caught by Pools. Edmonds was way over anyway into left center field. So Goodwin is retired. We've got Sports Center coming up with John Anderson and Dave Revson. Kurt Schilling is looking for 17 wins. NFL quarterbacks are under pressure. And we'll talk about baseball's greatest living player. All coming up on Sports Center. One out on the bottom of the seventh inning. And Ramon Martinez, who has gone two for three, subbing for Jeff Kent this evening, will bat for the fourth time. A single and a double for him. And the Giants get a great lift out of him. Just about whenever he plays, Kent is simply resting tonight from what 
we were told before the game, although he was in the original starting lineup. He'll get an at bat before this night's over with if they continue to be behind by one run. Our first thought was, well, he's probably got the flu because it's making its way through the giant clubhouse the last couple of days. I almost didn't go into the clubhouse just because of that. <laughs> yeah. I, the first one I saw was Jay Watasik, and I, oh, you can just hear it in his voice. He, he can hardly breathe. Yet this team is just they're, they're sucking it up and they're trying to figure out a way to, to contribute. Live ball up to the shallow right. And Marrero gloves it. They're two gone. It's Dusty Baker maneuvering with a new lineup tonight. Rich O'Reilly will step in, and that's where Kent has been batting over the last month or so, just tearing the cover off the ball. But really hits third tonight and Reggie Sanders fourth instead of Barry Bonds. And this lineup has produced only one run against the Cardinals. And of course Sanders is out of the ball game now because of that tender hamstring that he came up with. Because of the in all likelihood cool temperatures here. Strike one on Aurelia who has hit into a double play double and walked. Can't help but look at how strong these two teams are as far as their bench is concerned and also their bullpen. Well, Sean Dunson has come to the on deck area and is about to bat for the first time. He relieved the Richie Sanders and he had to come out. And there's a lot of things he can do. Sean Dunston makes any ball club better. You, know, you look at the bench for the St. Louis Cardinals. I mean, what if Edmonds goes down? That's not a bad option to throw J.D. Drew out there for a while. He's on the bench tonight. You look at Eduardo Perez. I mean, he's played terrific, particularly in the month of July. Damon Minor, option, play first base, depending on the matchups that Dusty Baker so chooses with J.T. Snow. Pedro Feliz is over. I mean, they're just... There's so many ways and, 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 and parts of that puzzle that you really you don't expect either one of these teams to not continue playing well. And both of the bullpens among the best in the National League. That's the biggest difference to me between the, the, the large market teams and the small markets are the benches and the bullpen. Atlanta another team with a strong bench and terrific bullpen. Knocked in the right, a base hit for Aurelia. So he's on for the third time in this contest. That keeps the inning alive for Sean Dunstan. A two out single for the San Francisco shortstop. Well, it looks like Rich Aurelia has pulled back that double down that he had out there, as Dusty Baker talked about earlier. He just simply took what he had, an off speed pitch on the outer half. You try to pull it, you're going to hit a weak ground ball. You go with it. You're going to hit the ball harder, and, and he did that time for a base hit. A little hanging slider out there, right on the outside corner. Nice piece of hit. So he's aboard the 39 year old Sean Dunstan. He broke in with the Cubs way back in 1985. I was there. And you were there to see one of the, one of the best young arms, and not a pitching arm. In baseball. I'll never forget Vince Coleman hit a ball in the hole. He caught it, stood up, and threw him out by two steps. And Whitey Herzog, the manager of the Carlins at the time, said, Now I know why he was drafted ahead of Dwight Gooden. <laughs> He's got a better <laughs> got arm. A better arm than, the, than Doc did. Yeah. Doc couldn't have thrown out Vince Coleman on that ball. <laughs> the 0 1 pitch fouled off out of play. And the man in the on deck circle is Benito Santiago. And when Benito first came up, talk about a great arm from a catcher's position. He threw out Vince Coleman the first time all year. Vince Coleman had been thrown out. And then Coleman tried to run on him again. A couple of innings later, he threw him out again. <laughs> and Coleman looked at him like, Who is this guy with this arm? And, and throwing me out from his knees, no less. The 0 2 pitch from Crudale. Got off again by Dunstan. And a souvenir down the right field line. Sean got a nice souvenir. 
over the winner. He told Barry Bonds in spring training, you're going to break Mark McGuire's record. Barry said, if I do, I'll buy you a new Mercedes. Well, both of them were true to their word. That's right. And you think he's not driving it? Two strikes on him. Aurelia getting his lead, two out. Down ball to short. Renteria will fling it on over for the force play. One man left. So we're through seven. Still a tight one in San Francisco, two to one, the Cardinals. There's no errors for the Giants. And here in inning number eight, it'll be Tino Martinez against LeVon Hernandez, who's still out there pitching. LeVon Hernandez touched up a two-run homer in the fifth inning by Jim Edmonds. And although he's had problems in a few other innings, once again, he has persevered, just like he did the last time against the Cardinals on Wednesday, when he hung around long enough to pitch into the eighth inning. Had no decision, but the Giants were down four to one in that game, came back and won it five to four. He scattered 11 hits on that night. Tino's gone one for two with a base hit. He's also lined to left. Another one for three. A strikeout back in the second inning. Sports Center coming you in next. Stay right there. As soon as we wrap it up in San Francisco. Line drive and a right to base hit. So Martinez pulls a single. Let's go to the studio for an update. Here's Kevin Court. Kevin. All right, fellas, thanks very much. Rockies and the Diamondbacks. Arizona threatening. Base is loaded with a 3-1 lead. And Luis Gonzalez with a four RBI night. This will score Womack and Council. Larry Walker throws out Junior Spivey. Still, the Snakes lead 5-1, top nine. So assuming the Diamondbacks hang on there, they will assure themselves of remaining in first place by themselves in the NL West. The Giants are going to be playing just to remain one game back, but they're going to have to overtake the Cardinals. Here. The Dodgers have lost their ball game five to two the final. So they're going to lose more ground if the Diamondbacks continue to maintain their lead tonight. You know, speaking of losing, I, I doing the homework this afternoon, I was amazed when I saw that with a loss tonight, LeVon Hernandez's career record will be 500, 64 and 64. I mean, I, everybody, I remember in the year 2000, big 17 game winner, 17 and 11. That, that, that really surprised me. It does me too. And, and coming into this season, this was looked upon as a pivotal year for LeVon Hernandez. Losing record last year, lost 15 games. This was the season he was going to step up to be a top of the rotation kind of pitcher. Or slide back and, and be a four or five kind of guy and perhaps wind up on a trade block. That might be happening. One ball and one strike on Renteria. Well, these aren't top of the rotation type numbers that he's putting up even here tonight. I know seven innings and only two runs, but there's 10 hits. There's been a lot of terrific defensive plays behind him. When I think of number one guys, I think of what Jason Simatachi has done. I mean, with a victory tonight, he's eight and one. That means you're seven games over 500 out of one guy. As a team, you've got to be so many games over 500 to be in contention. You've got one guy doing that kind of job. Martinez is taking off, and there is no throw on the play. How about that? Just stolen blind. And that's what you were looking for in the first couple of innings. Now here late, the Cardinals up by a run might be rolling out the running attack. How good of a jump does Tino Martinez need for Benito Santiago not to have a play? Well, he just got it. And it was courtesy of LeVon Hernandez. So a theft of second base puts Martinez in scoring position with nobody out. Flared into right, backing up Dunstan. He'll make the catch. Tino will tag up and head into third. And gets there with just one out. So Renteria socks it to right field. Dunstan making the play, but a huge run over there now for St. Louis at third. He did sock it that way too. I mean with authority. But watch Dunstan here. Watch him. He knows there's not really any play. His foot slips. He just gets set just at about, you know, 70% effort. 
One hop. That arm is still there. One bounce to third. So the infield is going to come in tight for San Francisco. And try and cut this runner down at the plate. Here's Marrero. Eli one for three, a single in the sixth inning. He's been a good hitter with men in scoring position. Pitch out, no play here. You know, Tony LaRusso is one to put on a squeeze play at any time. And to me, Dusty's just saying right there, I realize that. I'll take one pitch to try to keep you from doing that during the rest of this series. But I'm not going to squeeze bunt with Eli Morero no harder than LeVon Hernandez is throwing tonight. Into the dirt and stopped by Santiago. On the other hand, after a pitch out, isn't that a great time to call for him? It would be if you didn't like the matchup. And if, if I'm Tony La Russa, I love this matchup. Everything Eli Morero has done tonight has been outside of the infield. You've got the infield drawn in. you got to figure that he can be selective. He's been around long enough now to be patient, to hit in situations like this, get a pitch that's up in the zone, and just put the barrel of the bat on it. You've got another run. Well, the count's going his way, 2-0, and oh, infield in close. And that's ball three. Mike Matheny to hit next. Tino Martinez at third. Remember, he singled and then stole second. They're going to put him on only because they want to get Felix Rodriguez into the game. That'll be an intentional pass of Marrero. Felix Rodriguez loosening in the bullpen. He's ready. And uh, here comes Rigetti. Pitching coach Dave Rigetti marching to the mound. So if they lift him here, LeVon Hernandez pitches into the eighth inning again. But for the second consecutive start against the Cardinals, he gives up double figures and hits. Gave up 11 against them on Wednesday, 10 tonight. And it'll be on the corners. Somebody with one out. Dusty's sending the left-hander down there. Oh, excuse me, he's going with another right, and that's Jay Watasik. He's getting up. Now there is a left-hander down there as well, and he's having Felix Rodriguez sit down. How much has his stock dropped this year? Oh, this would have been an automatic spot for him. You wouldn't care whether it was a left-handed, right-handed hitter. You wouldn't care if it was Babe Ruth in his prime at home plate the way Felix Rodriguez has thrown the last couple of years, but been a different guy this year. One of the real rising stars among relief pitchers the last couple of seasons. And into the dugout he comes. The 29 year old out of the Dominican who last year was 9 and 1 with a 168 earned run average. But he has tumbled practically off the charts this year. I really thought his endurance last year was a key for San Francisco. He had maybe two bad outings the whole year. Everything else was dominant. He's not been brilliant this year. So Levon stays on to pitch to Matheny. Got the first one by him. Mike in the game is 0 for 3. J.D. Drew has come to the on-deck area. Well, here's why I start thinking about the suicide squeeze. Only because I, if I'm Dusty Baker, I don't mind this matchup. I mean, Matheny is, plays most of the time because of what he does defensively. And he's a career one for 21 off LeVon Hernandez. Not one and chops it. In comes Aurelia. Scoops fires on the run. And did not get it. And under the tag. Tino Martinez. Dusty Baker pops up to argue, but the home plate umpire Jim Wolf ruled Tino safe under the tag of Benito Santiago. He got it right, and, and what happened was the Giants just guessed wrong by moving their infield back. That ball was not hit hard enough to turn a double play on, so Aurelia had to try to get the runner at home plate. It was the only chance he had. A perfect pitch. The ball's not hit hard. In fact, it wasn't hit hard enough for anything to happen, that including the throw to home or the double play being turned. Aurelia does all he can. Really a nice hard slide there by Tino Martinez. And finally, another leadoff hitter of an inning getting on base, coming around to score. And it looked like the right call, too. You saw the, the toe of Tino 
on the plate just a hair before the tag by Benito Santiago. It's just been a horrible inning for Levon. You let the leadoff hitter get on again. Then Tino Martinez steals second base uncontested. I mean, Benito couldn't even get a throw off. Now it's his speed after getting to third base that beats the throw to home. Six times in eight innings, Levon Hernandez let the leadoff man on. And now he has to come out as Dusty takes the ball away from him. It is three to one St. Louis. And that is it for the right hander. Tino Martinez hustling home and beating the throw by Aurelia and attacked by Santiago. It's a two run lead for the Cardinals. St. Louis looking for more already leading three to one here in the top of the eighth inning. Sports Center coming your way next right here on ESPN. But the St. Louis Cardinals will bring up Miguel Cairo and facing the left hander Troy Brohan just called up on Wednesday and a fly ball if it is shallow left. Good one there for the catch and the second out. Brohan had just had his contract purchased from Triple A Fresno on Wednesday before the game against St. Louis. His Triple A numbers there but last year he made a bunch of appearances. For the World Series champion Arizona Diamondbacks. He has one more World Series ring than Barry Bonds has. And then this contract was purchased right after spring training, being released by Arizona. The reason for that was over the winter they were able to make a deal with the Colorado Rockies for Mike Myers. You think about the National League West and having a situational left-handed reliever as good as Myers is. What do you think about it? Barry Bonds, you're going to have to get him out. Think about Ryan Klesko. I think about Sean Green. How about now Todd Helton and Larry Walker? Yeah, Jim Edmonds, another guy. The tapper by Media. And Snow will set him down at first base. But the Cardinals get a big, big insurance run. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Ramon Hernandez on the hook for this one. 3 1 St. Louis. Monday Night Baseball on ESPN. The St. Louis Cardinals have just added a big insurance run, a three to one lead. As we go to the bottom of the eighth, Sports Center coming up next. So stay right where you are. We'd like to welcome those of you who have been watching Colorado and Arizona. Here to Pac Bell, that is the left hander Steve Klein, appearing in his 33rd game out of Tony LaRusso's very competent bullpen. After leading the league in appearances the last couple of years, you say, well, what's going on here? Steve Klein, only 32 games. Well, he was on the disabled list. Had a strain in that left tricep. Benito Santiago thought about a bunt, went after it. It's 0 1. I would imagine before it's all said and done, he'll still have, what do we got, two months left? He'll have 65. Sure. <laughs> he wants to pitch every day. Cap looks like it's been through about 150 performances this year, and no washings. At least you know it's not going to. There's not going to be any sweat going on tonight. Not in this chilly weather. A two hopper charging in Renteria, and Benito Santiago is retired. Well, this is just the perfect infield defense for Steve Klein. He'd be tempted to almost start him. As many ground balls as he gets. Good sinker, good slider, and a real good infield behind him. With a man out, it'll be J.T. Snow batting in front of 40,607 on this Monday on the Bay. Giants trailing by two, but this is a big, big home field advantage for the San Francisco Giants since they opened Pac Bell Park. They have the best home winning percentage of any club in the majors. You know, right along with that best winning percentage the last two years in the National League, the second half of the year, I think with the injuries that the Giants are sustaining this year, maybe they've got to be a little bit concerned. They're not the youngest ball club in the league. In fact, one of the oldest. They're right there with. The Arizona Diamondbacks in, in terms of, of age. In fact, Bob Brindley was telling me that before Jay Bell was activated, San Francisco was older than the Arizona Diamondbacks are. So you have to expect injuries. 
JT Snow not delighted with that strike call. Let's take another look. Well, one thing about Steve Klein on the mound, you, you just expect strikes if you're an umpire. I do as a broadcaster, and I think as a hitter, you have to. Borderline, yeah. With a guy with a reputation like him of working quick, always being around the plate, an umpire, you got to have that right arm ready. Yeah, got another name for you Maddox. <laughs> yeah. Talk about anticipating a strike on virtually every pitch or something close to the plate. Maddox on the mound's kind of like having John Wooden on the sideline. You know? I mean, you're going to get most of those calls. Two, two. He tried to hold up, got a piece of it. So it's a foul ball, and Snow will swing again. Well, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wooden slash Maddox actually lost today. Is that right? Yeah, down in Florida. That ain't happened in a while. No, yes, sir. It's the third time this year. What's that? Florida winning? Or this? <laughs> no, no. Since the break. Down low for a ball. So it's all filled up on JT Snow. David Bell, the next hitter in, as the Giants try and mount an eighth inning attack here. Kick and Klein's pitch. And he walked him. So Snow is aboard for the third time. A single. He was hit by a pitch and now ball four. And here comes David Bell with one down and a man on. Tony Russo just can hardly believe that happened. He had J excuse me, he had JT Snow right where he wanted him. Just didn't throw anything near the strike zone, hoping that JT would expand the zone. He didn't do that. And now, I mean, as, as bad as things could have been for San Francisco, that's a tie and run at home plate. And guess what? He's got some pop. 14 homers. He's driven in 48 runs. Foul away for strike. We talked about. The Bell family lineage in baseball goes to his grandfather as well. And Father Gus played in the big leagues. The terrific players. Dad was an all star and a gold glover. And now David Bell, who's been in on just about every terrific defensive play the Cardinals or the uh, Giants have made against the Cardinals tonight. Nothing and two on him, one down. Down and in, and another fine stop by Matheny, who has been the unsung hero of this one. Yeah, and, and I go back to an opportunity that Tony Russo had to pinch hit from Mike Matheny there in the top of the eighth inning. He had runners at the corners, even though Matheny drove in to run. I mean, it was on a ground ball. This is the reason Tony Russo kept him in the ball game. You still got the lead. You don't really need any more runs if you keep them from scoring. And to do that, he feels like his odds are better. But that guy behind home plate, most people agree. And he stopped the run right at the plate on a head jarring collision with J.T. Snow and hung onto the baseball. Fouled off quickly by Bell. And Karam's all the way out to climb. Well, Jeff Kent did not start tonight getting a rest, but you don't rest all night when you're down two in the eighth inning. He's starting to stir around near that bat rack. A man on. Ball, two strikes on Bell. Popped up, back toward the screen, but into the crowd. Sports Center next. So keep it right here on ESPN. This is Monday Night Baseball from San Francisco. The first place Cardinals against the second place Giants. And uh, Dave Duncan has trotted out to the mound. A count of one and two. And one down. What's this conversation about, sir? Well, he's just telling him what he wants him to do here, which which way to go about him. With David Bell behind in the count, a lot of teams nowadays have what they call the chase zone. 
when you've got the pitcher in, in, in an account that's favorable to him, what can you do where you throw it? It starts out in the zone with movement out of the zone. In what area are they more likely to chase it? The fastball running off the plate, breaking ball down and in. Bell pops another out of play. You can see right there what the charts of Dave Duncan has indicate with David Bell. Bounce the breaking ball. He didn't quite get it where he wanted it. Pretty lucky David didn't get more of that than he did. You don't want to see Jeff Kent in this inning. And in all probability, Kent's not going to hit until the pitcher spot. Dusty really doesn't have any position players left. Yeah. There's a drive to left. Did he get enough? Backing up pool holes, and it is gone. Klein was looking for the chase zone, and Bell chased it right out of the ballpark. And we're tied up at three. Well, all he needed to do was throw a strike to J.T. Snow when he was ahead in the count. He didn't do that by walking him. Now he throws a ball that is in the strike. That's not where he wanted it to be. David Bell just missed the last one. He didn't miss that one. And this crowd suddenly is back into it. Shinjo fouling one away at the plate. Now David Bell has been marvelous in the field, and now he tags a two-run homer, his 15th of the year. And you saw Robbie Nam. Dusty Baker sent him out to the bullpen to start getting loose. It's tied up. And they want their closer to get warm. Steve Klein has been marvelous. That's the first home run he's allowed this year. Up and in on Shinjo. And Jeff Kent has just now come to the on deck circle for the San Francisco Giants. And that's why Mike Matheny's coming out, just to give the reliever in the bullpen more time to get ready. And for the San Francisco Giants, two righties throwing for the Cardinals, Luther Hackman is quickly up in their pen on the right field line. Shinzo line drive caught by Renteria. Two down. But that one's stung by Shinjo. And now Jeff Kent held out of the starting lineup tonight to get a little rest. Will rest no more. And he has been nothing short of spectacular. Since Dusty Baker. Decided to bat him in front of Barry Bonds 21 games ago, hitting him third. Jeff Kent is holding down a 456 batting average with 19 runs batted in. That's the highest batting average in the majors over that span. And Klein will not face him. Here comes LaRusso. He's going to bring on Hackman. Tony didn't see the home run coming off the bat of David Bell, but he saw Jeff Kent come in the home plate at some point. He knows that Kent has hit a homer off Dave Veers. He's also hit a homer off Mike Timlin. He's never faced Luther Hackman. That's normally an advantage for the pitcher. Line is out. He gives up the two run shot to David Bell that ties it. And now it'll be Kent coming up against Hackman. We'll be back. Jeff Kent about to climb in two down here in the bottom of the eighth David Bell has just cracked a two run homer to tie it and right handed Luther Hackman is on to pitch for St. Louis a squib foul by Kent the numbers on Hackman and how about these numbers before Kent stepped in with bonds out and Kent not starting and Sanders lifted around the fifth inning because of his hamstring injury. The Giants were without 58 homers and 181 RBIs in their lineup. And they get some of that power back, some of that socked in the person of Kent. The 0-1. Now nothing at two on Kent. 
about four of the National League's top ten hitters being second basemen this year. And one of them's not Robbie Alomar. One of them's not Craig Biggio. Second base spot in the National League, a little bit. And I'm not comparing it completely to the shortstop in the American League, but somewhat. 13 game hitting streak for Kent to get that average up. The number three hitter in the National League behind Larry Walker and Barry Bonds. Well, this tells you how much that hitting streak means to him. He's only going to get one at that. Pinch hitting has not been his forte throughout his career. Well, a lot of that came earlier in the career, though. 0 and 2. Base is empty. A play to the right. If he should reach the guy who's really been lifting the Giants to dramatic wins lately, Tom Goodwin would bat next. The line and the 0 2 to Ken. And again, very pesky. He gets a piece. Well, he wants more than a piece. He wants the whole cake. With those last two, two strike swings, he realized it's one at bat. Get about putting together three singles and maybe getting a run. Let's we'll see if Kent remains in the ballgame to play second if. It remains tied. The 0 2 pitch cradled by Matheny. He can see that split figure coming the whole way. Now all he's got to do is figure out is it going to be a fastball or a slider. Hackman really slows down on that pitch, trying to get out in front with it to make sure he doesn't hang it. Here comes the slider again. Matheny saying, yep. The 1 2, got him with it. He struck him out. So the home run by Bell has tied it, but we go to the ninth inning in a 3-3 ball game. Bell tolling away in San Francisco knocks it out of the park, and we're all even. Tied up 3-3, and we're going to the ninth inning and still looking for a resolution. One thing we do know is Sports Center is next as soon as we finish up here in Northern California. Tim Morrell comes out of the pen. And he's been terrific. A 183 earned run average. He's scattered 32 hits, 34 strikeouts for Dusty Baker. Well, you're going to have a perfect record like that when you haven't allowed a run over your last 21 outings. Thus, he is 7 and 0. As Polanco fouls one away. Tonight, Acido has gone 0 for 4. And you know, for years, Tim Worrell fought being a reliever, he wanted to start. Remember 1996 as a setup man with the Padres and Trevor Hoffman, how good he was in that role. Came to spring training in 97, one end of the rotation. He's tremendous at this role here. Well, he's been perfect. And for the Atlanta Braves, the crafty left hander, Mike Remlinger, is also 7 0. Out of Bobby Cox, outstanding bullpen. Polanco hitting in front of Edmonds and then pool holes a dangerous part of the order for the St. Louis club and that's lined into the alley for a base hit maybe an extra base hit Shinjo trying to cut it off he does Polanco racing for second the throws off line and he has a double to begin the ninth Placido Polanco quickly into scoring position it's a two base hit for the number two hitter. Shinjo's got an incredible arm and normally really accurate with it. I've got to feel like that the, the moisture on the grass caused this ball to slip out of his hand as he went to throw it. You're in trouble there. But look at the throw. It's not online, not even near second base. Take a look at Shinjo. Here it comes. There it goes. And right away, look at it. That's what exactly something had to happen there. I expected that play to be a lot closer than that. A dewy chill here in. San Francisco so the grass a little bit slick now he knows Shinjo what it was like to pitch as Gaylord Perry <laughs> for the Giants all those years so a lot of looks like that didn't you 
Well, they're going to put Edmonds on. This will put him on at first and second with nobody out. But then they have to face Albert Pujols. And Rob Nan is going to start loosening again. As he inches closer and closer to 300 saves. Sitting right now at 297. That's a big number. It is. He's been so good for a long time now. And there's ball four, so Edmonds will reach for the third time tonight. His two run homer in the fifth inning put the Cardinals in front. At the time, two to nothing. You know, here's just another example of what we've talked about all night the strength, the inner strength of this St. Louis Cardinals team and how they are all pulling on the same side of that rope. All right, Steve Klein made a mistake. He hung a breaking ball. Well, you know what? There's a lot of us that have done that. Every one of those guys have, all being pitchers, Matt Moore. First time all year that he's given up a home run. Well, what do you do? You, you, do you just, you know, pick your stuff up and go home? No. Polanco starts off with a hit, turns it into a double. I mean, everybody is picking each other up, and it's it's just amazing they were able to do it as soon as they have. Well, Albert Pujols is not going to be bunting as he takes low for a ball tonight. He's gone one for three, a base hit in the fifth. They intentionally walked him in the third inning. 75 runs batted in. The big left fielder. Morell is allowed to double. Now the intentional pass. And he's in a little bit of a pickle. The one pick runs in. Two and nothing. Sports Center coming up next. Don't you move a muscle. What? There's a guy down in the Giants bullpen has got a lot of muscles moving. These bases are to be loaded with nobody out. Looks like Dusty's going to go with his number one guy in that bullpen. Outside for ball three. Close one here. Doesn't miss by much, but if you miss by just that much to this guy, well, that three to three scores, gonna, that three runs for St. Louis would be doubled. Did they green light pool holes here? Here's the three nothing. He's taking all the way and it loads the bases. Ball four. So a Cardinal at every base with nobody out, and the Wolf is at the door with Dusty Baker. Well, Dusty's sending Benito out there to talk, but I think he's already made up his mind. He's just going to make sure that Rob Nen is good and ready. Yep. Here comes the pitching change. Rob Nen will be brought into a situation in which he has been dynamite in his career. Base is loaded spot, but it's a tie game. And he's trying to prevent the Cardinals from scoring a go-ahead run here. We're in the ninth, and we'll be back in a moment. Top nine, and the Cardinals have the bases loaded. The Giants have the infield in, and San Francisco also has closer Rob Nen in. Well, he's in to get a strikeout. You wouldn't mind having that ground ball sharply hit to somebody, possibly turning a double play. But he over the course of his career is going to strike out more people than Tim Morell is. That's why Dusty went this route. Tino with nine grand slams goes after the first pitch and knocks a foul straight back. He's gone two for four tonight with a pair of singles. A big stolen base in the eighth inning. First fastball from Rob Nankin. Coming in there at 97 miles an hour. Had to be a tough call for Dusty because, as we mentioned, Tim Morrell unscored upon in his last 21 straight outings. But look at Nan in his last 14 games. No earned run. Popped up. Backing up Aurelio. Infield fly rule, and he makes the catch. A gigantic out. Nen gets Martinez. That sets up an inning-ending double play if Nen can get it. 
Rob Nant throughout his career has been nothing short of spectacular with the bases loaded. And he gets Tino for the first out. No strikeout. But he got him just the same. And here comes Renteria. Tino just couldn't get that bat speed sped up enough. After striking out in his first at bat against Levon, he wore him out from that point on. But at 87 miles an hour, he saw with Levon is <laughs> plus 10 right now. Bases jam. And that's ball one. Edgar Enteria throughout the first part of the game faced his old friend from the Florida Marlins and the World Championship team, and Levon Hernandez. And Rob Nen was also a key member of that team. He was the closer. The one nothing pitch. Two and oh. A man at every base for the Cardinals. Polanco at third. Jim Edmonds at second. Albert Pujols at first. Renteria in the box. A 3-3 tie, one out in the ninth. Right through it. Two and one. Another blistering fastball by Ned. Not many people that can do this. Tell you what's coming. Bases loaded, one out, 2-0. That's what's coming, a fastball. And you don't come close to it. And from the stretch. Foul back to the screen, so it's all even now. Two and two. You know, even if Tony LaRusso wanted to put the suicide squeeze on, which he's not going to now with two strikes, Rob Nin's got to be the toughest guy in baseball to do that against with that little tap. Yeah. <laughs> when do you send the runner? As the leg starts towards home or after he taps? Got to time it. Doesn't give you much time to get there. Yeah, good luck. And you don't have much time to judge whether you're going to swing the bat or not because it's going to get there in a hurry. This is a great matchup. I mean, you got one of the best closers in baseball and one of the best clutch hitters in the game. Men's two and two. A full count. Three balls, two strikes. No. You don't send the runner. <laughs> you just sit back. Tony Russo has done everything he can. Dusty Baker's done all he can do. This game's about players. Men's pit. Fly to right field deep. Racing back Dunstan. He's going to have to play it off the wall. One run in. Polanco scores. Edmonds coming in. He's trying to score. He will. And Renteria wins the battle against his old friend Rob Nan. A two run double, 5 3 St. Louis. Renteria goes the other way in a 3 2 pitch and smashes it off the right field wall. This is quite a special player the St. Louis Cardinals have right now and to think last year they thought about trading him well that they're not going to think about that for a long time to come in the best shape of his life he's playing outstanding defensively at shortstop always been a clutch hitter he just proves it one more time he didn't miss a grand slam by too much just a little shy of the top of the wall a two run double. So Marrero will be put on intentionally. That'll reload the bases. Morrell charged with those runs. 5-3 St. Louis. This surprises me a little bit. Not the intentional pass, but the fact that Rob Nen's still out there. All right, he did the best he could. You know, he came in, he had to throw a strike, 3-2. He did, he got beat. And he put on quite a battle. But you know you've got three more games against this same team. This guy is real important. I wouldn't want him to throw many more pitches than what he already has. Well, nobody warming up right now in the giant bullpen. So it's Rob Nen's show. Terry Robinson is going to pinch hit. He'll hit in the eight hole for Matheny. Say what the Mike Matheny? If the St. Louis Cardinals hang on for the win, will have had his fingerprints all over this one. Tell him not to go anywhere because we may want to interview him when it's over with <laughs> as the start of the game. Yeah. Even though he got pinch hit for. 
infield in about as close as he can possibly get for San Francisco. All filled up just one out in the ninth. Now Robinson not a big guy not a home run hitter but the ball absolutely flies off his bat when he connects. Hitting 267. Ends 2 and 0. Oh. 3 and nothing. For the St. Louis Cardinals, their closer. Jason Isringhausen gets ready. Well, you know, and, and closers are just the, the different type of animal. I mean, Rob Nin, I mean, he, he's got a he, he smoke on the water. They play it as he walks in. And you know what? That's his intensity. That's what he's all about. But you give up a couple of runs. He's not used to not pitching with the lead. And right now, I mean, that that the, the adrenaline and the intensity in his body is just not what it normally is. Robinson stings it, caught by Martinez, and the runners will stay right where they are. Two down. And now that infield can back up to normal depth. But that ball hit pretty sharply by Robinson. And that's where numbers are so deceiving. You're going to look at the pinch hit numbers by Robinson at the end of the year and say, well, he did this or he didn't do that. That ball was smoked. That's that's just there's some bad luck right there involved. Eduardo Perez to pinch hit. So he becomes the eighth Cardinal to swing here in the ninth inning. An inning that started 3-3. But because of the Renteria bases loaded two run double, St. Louis has a 5 3 advantage. Still loaded up. Eduardo <laughs> couldn't hold up on the fastball, and it's nothing in one. Arizona has already won, so just to remain one game back, the Giants are going to have to rally in their half of the night and pull out a win for Dusty Baker. Left field on the move, Goodman. He'll haul it in to the out. They'll leave him loaded. But the Cardinals get two on the Renteria bases loaded hit. Isringhausen comes out of the bullpen to try and secure it for the Cardinals. They lead it 5 3. Well, the crowd of just over 40,000 looking to rally their Giants. St. Louis with a 5 3 lead as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Gary Robinson stays in the ball game to play right field. But Eli Marrero remains in to catch. He goes behind the plate, and the man he'll receive is the St. Louis closer, Jason Isringhausen. He comes in two and one. He is bidding for what would be his 23rd save of the year. Just another reason why a lot of people think the St. Louis Cardinals team has all it takes to win it all. Isringhausen coming over from the Oakland A's, another one of those acquisitions. And you know what? The Cardinals aren't through. Picking up Chuck Finley, as we talked about earlier, there's talk that they, they may go get more. A big lift that they could get would be getting Woody Williams back. Well, let's see if the, as you look at Finley, let's see if the Giants can mount a comeback. Goodman leads off the bottom of the ninth, taking a strike. He's gone 0 for 4. How about the resiliency of this team? I mean, they just, they won't quit. Talking about the Cardinals. I don't care how jaded you are, how much baseball you've seen, and how you may feel you've seen it all. This Cardinal team, it's impressive. And it might be the closest knit clubhouse in baseball after all they've been through. You made the point earlier the teams, having gone through the tragedy and all the injuries the Cardinals have, they go one way or the other. They either fall apart or they tighten up. They certainly tightened up. That one almost got Goodwin on the foot. No He's trying to sell it. Jason Isringhausen to tighten up. You got a big lead. Up until yesterday, you've got no power at home plate. Hitting that home run. It's kind of a rare thing for him, not really his forte. Take a look at Tino and how he gets ready. Watch it. I mean, he just, he just he's always alert. Ground ball sharply, but Vina, the gold glover down to get it. One down. And everybody on that field is like that. 
That's just one of the things I think that he really brought to this ball club is, is both sides of the coin. You know, it's not always going to work out offensively for him, but defensively, it's not going to be because he's not prepared. And he was telling me tonight, he goes, you know what, Sud? He said, it, it just wasn't fun. And we all got together right after the All-Star break, and we said, you know what? We, 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 for Daryl and for Jack, they would want us to go on. We've got to find a way to make this fun again. And they're doing the best they can. Ramon Martinez takes a pitch for strike one. He has gone two for four. Playing second base tonight. As Jeff Kent rested most of the evening until a pinch hit effort where he struck out. Cincinnati Reds by the way have lost to the Pittsburgh Pirates so if the Cardinals hang on for this one they'll improve to four and a half over Cincinnati. Yeah but look at that lost column. That says six. And that's the one that matters. The Astros starting to creep up again though. Although not yet at 500. I think losing Shane Reynolds really hurt their chances. That was a consistent 12 to 15 wins and seven innings a night they could count on and have for a long time. It's not there anymore. One out here in the bottom of the ninth. Bases are empty. 5 3 St. Louis. To right but foul. You know, I was talking with, with some fans of the Cardinals in St. Louis last week and. You know they, they they always pull for their team but they were saying how they they've never pulled for a Cardinal team more than they are this one. And I've talked with other fans of other teams and they, you know when they're not playing our team we're pulling for the Cardinals. I mean, it, it, it's just neat to see the, the whole baseball family trying to help these guys out with all they've been through. The 2 2 from Isringhausen. Just a little bit low. This one looked pretty good. Martinez took it. Is it lower outside or did it miss it all? Wasn't low. Might have been a tad outside. But I tell you what, Jim Wolf's done an outstanding job tonight. Not many arguments. <laughs> 